for Kansas State. Congratulations to the Wildcats. The 33rd meeting all time between these two teams. LSU has won four of the last five. Georgia in their fifth SEC championship game in the last six years. The last time LSU was here, they won it with Joe Burrow and company in 2019. LSU won the toss. They want the football. Noah Kane is back deep. Awaiting the kick from Jack Pudlesny. For an SEC championship, here we go. And LSU will bring it out to the 25-yard line to start offensively. And the guy we've talked about so much, and for good reason. He's been really special when healthy. He's the heart and soul of their offense. And I mentioned 65% of their offense is Jaden Daniels, the transfer from Arizona State, there's his numbers, total yardage, second most in school history. It'll set his offense up at the 25. John Emery's going to start in the backfield with him. Josh Williams is back from a knee injury, and he is healthy and ready to go as well. Mason Taylor, the tight end, in motion on the first snap of the game. And it is Emery right in the middle of that line, and that's going nowhere. Azir Stackhouse meets him at the line of scrimmage. And here's our Dr. Pepper lineups. The rest of the LSU offense, Josh Williams, I mentioned, missed a couple of games with a knee. And he is back and healthy to join Emory in the backfield. Daniels, first throw is complete. Out across the 30 to the 32. And got it to Malik Neighbors, their number one receiver in number of catches. Jaden Daniels is playing his best ball. He brings the scramble with the passing game. But we saw him against Alabama, and he was accurate early, and that's what got this LSU team rolling in that football game. LSU, 49% on third down conversions. Here's their first one of the ball game. Third down at three. Again, Taylor will move from right to left. Daniels, the quick throw, and he got it slant out to the 40 complete. And it was Jure Jenkins for the first down. You got to win one-on-one -on -one battles when you go against this Georgia defense. They're going to challenge you. Tennessee couldn't do it. But LSU started the game saying, we know we're not going to be able to pound the ball inside against this defense. We're going to have to loosen them up. So far, so good. Yes. Daniels on the scramble, got to the outside. His wheels look pretty good there. Brought down after a pickup of five as we check the defense for Georgia. Freshman that has been everything advertised. Malachi Starks in that back end, a freshman playing in an SEC championship game. He's had a really good year. Jalen Carter comes out of the Georgia lineup. A second down and five for the Tigers and Josh Williams in the backfield now. Takes it to Williams. Daniels loads, has all day to throw. And threw it way out of bounds and completes. Intended for Keishon Butte, or he's the closest guy anyway. And that's the strength Kirby believes of his defense. Smart veteran football players, especially Chris Smith. Their safety, middle of the field, nothing open. Everybody blanketed, had to throw it away. So they face their second third down. They picked up a third and three. A couple of minutes ago, third down and five here. Georgia. This is where Georgia wants to make an impact. Right. Third and passing downs. As you saw, one of the best in the country providing third down conversions. Daniels over the middle, low, incomplete. Intended for booting. And they're going to have to put it away. Yeah, and if you watch the tape, David Bullard, number 22, all year has been tough to throw the ball. One of the top has tipped up front, that ball yep. was. But one of the toughest guys to complete passes all year. They're averaging four yards per target against Bullard. One of the best in the country. Tresman Marshall, as Gary mentioned, got a hand on that pass. And it forces the punt. Ladd McConkey back deep for Georgia. And a fair catch called for in some traffic, and he's going to have to let it bounce. 
Not sure if he lost it in the roof or just wanted to get out of the way, but Georgia will be just outside their own 20-yard line on offense when we come back. And 2017 to national champion last year, looking for an SEC title, which is the only thing that escaped him last season in a 14-1 year. And the Dr. Pepper lineups joining him on the Georgia side of things. We talk a lot about Brock Bowers, but I'm telling you, the other, guy, the other guy's pretty good too. Darnell Washington, the tight end, in a two tight end set a lot of the time for Georgia. Like having a third tackle on the field who can catch passes. What a weapon. There he is. Big O. They call him that due to his jersey number. First down at the 21. And LSU equal to the task on the first snap, much like Georgia Allegay with the stop on Kenny McIntosh. And the LSU defense, the Tigers getting. Jarek Bernard, Converse back from a concussion that forced him to miss a game a week ago. So that helps their secondary. No gain on the first carry for Kenny McIntosh, second down to 10. This time he's got a little bit of room, but well, still going. Got it out for about six. So that's really the challenge for LSU. Brian Kelly, when he came into this league, says what everybody else says. It's a line of scrimmage league. Yep. And last week, the line of scrimmage was dominated by Texas A&M. He looked right at his team and said, if you don't stop them up front, they're just going to roll us. How much you got in the tank? Because you got to stop the run game first. Third down and four, Georgia 51%. Third down conversions on the year. Let's see if Stetson Bennett will put it up for the first time. Stands the field, running out of time, lobs one to the far side, incomplete intended for McIntosh. Well covered over there, and Georgia will have to punt. Yeah, Michael Bakersfield that time, the inside linebacker, ran right with it, makes the play. Watch him. Playing right there, stays with his man, crowds it, and then he goes and takes it. Nobody open to throw it. Maybe there was, but Stetson Bennett took his eyes off downfield and was looking for the running back. Nothing there. Baskerville, one of the only two LSU players to have played in that 2019 game here against Georgia. So Brett Thorson will have to kick. He sure did. Clayton has to back pedal. Oh, got nailed as soon as he got the ball at the 17-yard line. That's, That's some serious special teams play. That's some serious catching that punt. I mean, he that was almost simultaneous when he got there. Maybe even a hair early if you look in slow motion. Ooh. I think he did. I think he got there just a hair early. What a catch. And what a tackle. Good look at play all the way around. Thorson punt arriving at the punt returner. And Gary thinks this one was too soon. Gene Steratore is with us. He's our rules expert. He's with us in the booth. I agree with you guys. I think he hasn't given him that space to make the catch. To me, that's kick catch interference. Now he didn't signal for fair catch, but he still has to give him that, un, you know, that opportunity to catch and make that catch clean. It's way too tight to me. I think that's a penalty, guys. Wasn't called though, so LSU will be right there at the 17-yard line. John Emery behind. Jaden Daniels, who's trying to be heard over this Georgia crowd. It's probably about 75 25 crowd wise in here, and he's going to have to call a timeout. And now Georgia fans will really let him know. And as we've done a number of LSU games in this building when they were going for the championship, not as many LSU fans no. as normal. It's not 50 50 as you would count it. Army Navy. Now it's time to do Project Smarter. Presented by the Home Depot. If you got a quarterback that moves around a lot, find yourself a spy. Yeah, I, I think that early in this game, but AM used the spy very effectively against Jaden Daniels. We talked to Kirby, the architect against of this Georgia defense. He goes, I don't like to do it, 
We will, but we will not beat you. Yes. <laughs> and I said, will you have more than one? Yeah. He said, yes. 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 Who were they? I'm not, <laughs> I'm telling, not telling you that I like part. you guys a lot, but I'm not telling you. <laughs> so after the timeout, first down from the 17. Daniels rips it near side. Good throw and catch near the first down marker is Malik Neighbors. Neighbors came in as their leading receiver with 58 catches. One of the spots to look like to look at right here, Emory Jones, true freshman offensive tackle. That is a pressure point. Does a nice job right there, doesn't Boy, he? He on that side and Campbell on the other, both freshmen. Down the middle, complete. Ute. And he picks up about seven. Yeah, we're not talking about freshmen that, you know, is red shirt. We're talking about guys that played high school football a year ago. Exactly. Going against this elite Georgia defense. We've got a tempo here for the Tigers as they got seven on that. Well, it, even if they don't go fast, they freeze Georgia's defense. They can't substitute. Second down and three. Emery. Weaves his way for a first down. Tough run, good second effort as we check in with Jenny. Yeah, after suffering that ankle injury against Texas A&M last week, Daniels, I spoke with him, and he was in a walking boot on Sunday through Tuesday. He was able to start practicing on Wednesday, but his main focus was getting that proper treatment. So he was doing aqua therapy, getting massages, rotating between ice and heat treatments. On Thursday, he told me he was around 70%. Brian Kelly said about 90% today. But guys, he told me he just doesn't want to second-guess himself mentally in today's game. He's got both cleats spatted up to, yeah, make him, to make them even. And when we watched him play before, he either shoe was spatted up. You're right, disguise. First down from the 37, running out of time. He got away from the Georgia rush and actually got about three yards out of it. So Jaden Davis has been sacked 40 times this year. He holds onto the ball and he makes a lot of plays by holding onto the ball. But then when it doesn't good, look good, this is when he's dangerous. We'll see how dangerous he is with that ankle today. Loomis Johnson came on that late blitz and had a hand on him. but couldn't control him. And now it's another first down and on the run. Malik Neighbors into Georgia territory and another first down to the 42-yard line. Malik Neighbors has caught, that's his 40th first down this year, best in the SEC. When he catches the ball, he's gained yards after catch, and he got a lot right there. Got 18, and so we've got an offense and the opponent's end of the field for the first time. First down at the Georgia 42. How much pressure will Georgia bring and try to keep Jaden Daniels in the pocket by filling up the pocket with an extra rusher. Emory. Maybe at three out of it before he's pushed back by Smile Munden. So this is the zone read play that LSU runs all day. It's part of a triple option. The first option is to run it right here to this guy, but Miles comes across. Miles Taylor comes across. That's an option. Later, you'll see Jaden Daniels keep it and dump it, almost pitch it to Miles Taylor for that play. Josh Williams checks into the backfield now as he and John Emery trade off spots to tailback position. Second and seven. Daniels down the middle on a rope. What a throw. First down to Lacey. What a throw. And rope is the key right here. This ball's on the way, and he can't even barely get his hands up. It's coming so fast. 16 more yards on that pass play. Daniels wants it all here to the corner. Incomplete. He had a free play, I think. He felt he, yeah, I think he felt that Georgia was in the neutral zone, and he let it go for a touchdown. Smart play by Daniels. Offside on the defense, number 15, in the neutral zone at the snap. Five-yard penalty, replay, first down. So offense, uh, defensive encroachment on Georgia. That was not the penalty at the end of the play. It's right there. It's right in front of him. He saw it. He anticipated the flag, and he was correct. President Marshall just got a toe in the neutral zone. And great sign, though, for LSU early. Big Daniels is pitching it. They've worked it into the red zone already at the Georgia 18-yard line. First and five. 
Daniels, there's a that's a play that Gary just called a couple of minutes ago. They do it over and over again. They hurt Alabama with that play throughout the game. Not a lot of deep throws off it. A little short ones to keep you honest. It's really a triple option from shotgun football. Zone read, you read the inside linebacker, but look at that tackle. That's what Georgia's secondary does as well as anybody in the country. They wrap up and they tackle. Chris Smith did it right there. Remember, Mason Taylor was a guy that caught a similar pass from Daniels to win the Alabama game with a two-point conversion. Second and seven. As they actually lost yardage on that play. Daniels, this time the pocket's collapsing and down he goes. Georgia got to him that time. Jalen Carter is the guy that collapsed the park. He's hurting already. That was the question. You're okay, you're okay, you're okay until you get tackled. And then that extra pressure, those big, strong defensive linemen, they wrap you up and they twist you. And what kind of torque was put on that ankle right here? Yes, landed right on it, didn't he, from behind. I think it was Wolf Wolf Hour. Hour. Yep. And he felt it. So you go from 80 back to 90, back to 70%. What's he now? We hope that, but we'll see. Third down and nine. They got to get down to the 13 yard line for a first down. Daniels looking down the middle, goes, completed it. Inside the 10 to the eight. Brian Thomas, and again, he threw a strike. Story so far. Remember, this team for LSU, 121 in the country and giving up sacks. But the four-man rush for Georgia has only come through one time. He's had good time to throw the football. Whether you're limping or not, you can throw a strike, and he did right there. He's had completions of 18, 16, 15. Now first and goal, and he's going to try to run with it. Georgia will bring him down after a gain of two, but he got to the five. Mike Denbrook, the offensive coordinator for LSU, might not have a monitor and see that he's limping right there, right? <laughs> yeah, we're or he's going, closing his yeah, eyes. We're going with our offense. <laughs> Gene, that's all we got. We got to run these plays. Second to go at the five. Just remarkable. Two true freshman tackles in this game. Lock block in this defensive line for Georgia. Look at this. A trip set to the top of the screen and two wide receivers to the bottom. Daniels comes near side through the hands of Butte and Keeley Ringo in coverage. Butte, we know what he's done in the past. Had those big days. Has not really brought, broken out this much this year with the big ones. Try to get a rub, but great coverage. By Georgia on the play, nowhere to go with the football. Our at and 5G pylon can, and Keely Ringo had almost a better play on that ball with Butte. Yeah, if Butte had a chance to catch it, Ringo would too, correct? Yep. 13th play of the drive. Third down and goal, LSU. Try to get on the scoreboard first. Daniels, here comes the heat. Down he goes at the 15. Second sack on this series and this is Chaz Chambliss. He went right through the tight end Mason kick Taylor that time. They kept Mason Taylor in and he could not handle Chaz Chambliss. There he is right here. Cannot handle the blitz from the outside. Just pushes him off. Gets him in there. Another by the way. Three true freshmen. They attack that side going against Emory Jones and Taylor and they get the sack. Damian Ramos will try a 32-yard field goal to try to put LSU on the board first. High snap. They got it down, and it's blocked. Georgia stuffs it. And now here comes the run back. If this stands, it's going to be about a 95-yard touchdown. It will stand. LSU is acting as if it was an extra point. The ball is alive. Chris Smith takes it coast to coast for Georgia. Watch how LSU reacts. Jalen Carter is a guy that's going to get it, I think. He had two blocks last year. No one covers. Motion, in motion, he looks, he looks. It's free, why not pick it up? Gene Steratore, 
It's all good, right, Gene? It sure is, Brad, and a great and very alert play by Georgia. It's a scrimmage kick. It falls in the same category as a punt. Now, if it clearly comes to rest and no one is in the area, then the officials will blow it dead. Here, Smith does a great job. He waits for it just to almost become dead, realizes everybody else is slowing down, picks the football up, and look at the result. What great a, alert play by what Georgia. What a smart play. It was in its final series of just rocking to a stop. And Smith grabbed it and went the distance. Looking at the official to see if he blew the whistle, though. The smart play. We talked about Chris Smith being the quarterback of the defense. There, he makes the head up, heads up veteran football play. Block up front first. Oh, nice. Remember, that's how this LSU team started the season. The block extra right. point up front against Florida State. And they get one on the field goal. It was Nazir Stackhouse that got a big paw out in the middle. And then Chris Smith alertly takes it 95 yards. 7 nothing Georgia. The chip as well. There's the high snap. There's the block. Keep and then watch, yeah. watch the ball almost stop right there. The final move. It was still rocking. <laughs> it was down to one rock. Yeah, one rock left. Christmas looking around like, can I do this? Can I do this? <laughs> That's live. That's live. That's Todd Monk in the upper there. Oh, no. He's saying, don't pick it up. Don't, don't. It's what? Okay, go ahead. Yes. <laughs> go, 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 go. <laughs> but left knee's kick off into the end zone. Don't touch it. Don't, don't, don't. What? Yes, yes. Uh, fifth block field goal in a championship game. The second one returned for a touchdown. And it was number 29. Uh, all, all the way back, I just was thinking back that great game that Georgia against Alabama. Remember that there was a blocked field goal for a touchdown by Georgia in that game yeah, as well. That's right. That's Chaz Chambliss that's down. The guy who had a sack on the previous series injured on the kickoff team. Injured on that uh, kickoff. It was Cash Jones. They're both number 32. I cashed in too early on that. Well, Red that's freshman. one thing tomorrow that Andrew Catalan and James Lawson won't have to no, worry about. That's double sure. numbers, right? <laughs> I hate them. And it goes with college football. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you and I have not enjoyed that for a lot of years. <laughs> So first down LSU from their own 25. They wasted a long drive of 13 plays before having a field goal blocked. And now they go back to the ground game. Josh Williams for about seven. Same play, zone read. They're reading the linebacker, split zone. They're bringing Mason come across. The tight end comes across. Off of that, they're going to run the quarterback. They're going to throw passes off it. It's a staple. One thing about this LSU offense, they start their tight ends out wide, and then they insert them back in. There's a shift on the defensive front for the Dogs, and the throw out in the flat is complete to Williams. Nice stiff arm, and Josh Williams, uh, first down in Georgia territory. And nice job by Brian Thomas, number 11. Watch him get the block at the end of this play. Goes out there, and that's the last one that springs it against Ringo on the play. That was a one-man pattern. The receivers were all blocking, and they all did. Williams got to the 47, not into Georgia territory, but a first down and a pickup of 15. Now John Emery back in the backfield. Daniels wanting to throw again. Down the middle and complete to Booty. And he's still running, and he might be gone. Kayshawn Booty, touchdown, LSU. 53 yards on a scoring strike. And the story so far, time to throw the ball and watch this. To square in from the slot, wide open, wide open. And then, usually the solid tackling of the Georgia defense. You don't get a lot of yaks, but that guy... In the past has produced yak yardage. And you know, if you're LSU, Brian Kelly looked at his team and go, we ran a 14-play drive. We caught a bad break. Right. Let's go out and play football. And LSU did. Now the point after from Ramos, who had that field goal blocks, has the extra point perfect. 2.21 remaining first quarter. LSU is answered. 
KC and the Sunshine Band and Kayshawn Booty shaking it all the way for the Georgia end zone. 7-7. Seven, seven. Final seven games after getting hurt against Kentucky. He still had nine touchdown catches last year, so they had huge plans for him, and so did the LSU fans. Got off to a slow start, but uh, he and Brian Kelly came to an yeah, understanding kind so. of halfway through the season. Nice job by Coach Kelly. He's pouting a little bit like all the good receivers do when they don't get the ball. Right. Said, hang in there. It'll come. He has. And he joined every part of it, blocking, being a good teammate, and paying off today. So it's 7 7, but Georgia's offense has barely been on the field. They're back out there right now. All right. Very cool shots are brought to you by Goodyear inside Mercedes Benz Stadium in Atlanta. Yeah, it always happens that way. When you get a return for a touchdown, defense goes right back out there. Three plays so far in this first quarter. What are we down to? Two minutes and 21 seconds to go in this first quarter. They need the Georgia offense to give their defense a blow here. They need a few first downs. Brock Bowers in motion and now settles in. Blitz off the corner. Bennett runs the other way away from it and throws a strike at a first down. And it's Lad McConkey, a pickup of 11. They'll move the sticks. So everybody thought coming into this football game that this Georgia team would just attack LSU in the run game. They'll play it safe. Todd Munkin saw three plays and he goes, you know what? <laughs> We're going to play the way we played early in the season against Kentucky and Georgia Tech. One was a little bit of weather protecting the ball. I think they're just going to run the whole offense here. Let's we'll see what happens. Let's loosen them up. Next, it'll be the tight ends. Play fake, RPO down the middle. It's tight end named Brock Bowers right on Gary's call. First down. Yeah, you can almost feel it. You got to go to your guys that you have confidence in. Important football game, an important drive. You look to your money players. Nice lead that time. That was behind him on purpose. 47th catch for Bowers, and now it's Bowers again on a crossing rep, and he's still going. Brock Bowers all the way to the 18-yard line. Well, the veteran quarterback, Stetson Bennett, remember a year ago, he was dueling against Bryce Young. Lots of questions. Didn't win that game, but he got it rolling, and now he, he's the leader. I mean, he's the trigger man. Everybody on this team believes in him. Toss sweep. McIntosh got inside the 10, but there's a late flag. Yeah, one of those passing toss sweeps, though, correct? I mean, I, that was shotgun, get it out there fast, and it ends up being exactly that. Let's see if it's on Darnell Washington for holding. He's the one that seems upset. Personal foul. Illegal block below the waist on the defense. Number five. Penalty is half position to the goal. Yeah. Automatic first That's down. That's right. Darnell Washington's hurting right there. The big guy comes out and... Number five, Jay Ward goes at his knees. You cannot do that anymore. You cannot block the blocker. Hey, he's 6'7", 260. Too bad. Take him on. You cannot go and block go to his legs like that. You got to take him on high. Good call. And so that moves it half the distance. And Georgia's got first and goal at the four. A quick move down the field courtesy of Stetson Bennett and Brock Bowers. And now they're knocking on the door. Only about a yard for Kenny McIntosh. So Georgia struggled in the game we did against Kentucky in the red zone. Five trips, one touchdown. And they were trying to hammer it inside. I wonder if they're going to think more quarterback here. Use Stetson Bennett's legs. You know, they've been the number one team in the country most of the year in the red zone. 97%, but 21 of those have ended up in field goals. And they want touchdowns. They're looking for their first offensive touchdown of the day. A little more diversity, try to get the quarterback involved. All right, both tight ends on the right-hand side, and so is McConkey. But Bennett's looking the other way. And slipping and going down is Adai Mitchell. Yep. Incomplete. Adane had been out with an injury, really played in the Oregon game in very little sense. Yes, everybody's been waiting. Last week he warmed up, did not play. This week he warmed up. Oh, could not get out of his break. Comes in with the stutter, anticipates the throw from Stetson. Perfect spot, falls down. Almost took our camera out on that throw. Third and goal. Might be the final play right here in the quarter. 
Dejon Edwards in the backfield and gets in motion out of it. Bennett throws on the run. Bowers, touchdown, Georgia. Three catches on the drive. The last one's in the end zone for number 19. Yes, I love the way they used Stetson Bennett when they were down here. They didn't be hard-headed about it. They, they used the quarterback. Mitchell falls down. They come right back to their other star. This time, a perfect throw on the run. Just a long handoff. Stetson Bennett's drive right there, wasn't it? He sure was. 75 yards. Most of it off his right arm and most of it in the hands of that guy. But Lesney in for the point after. Out of a Stetson Bennett hole. And he's got it up and good. So it's been touchdown, touchdown, touchdown. And Back that, and forth. And that Georgia defense is applauding as much as anyone. They needed a rest. They got a rest and seven points. Let's talk about Brock Bowers from Stetson Bennett. I mentioned he had three on the drive. This right. one was bouncing off people. Yep, right over the umpire's head, but he led him to the open space. Then the crossing route. That was the 32-yarder there. And Bowers, they have, I don't know if this is an oxymoron, Ness, but the Georgia tight ends are somewhat of a, they're, they're unicorns, but they're different. One guy's a unicorn athlete, the other's a unicorn freak at tight end. They got two unicorns. Can you, you don't that? see Usually you don't see one. You don't see two unicorns very often. <laughs> so Stetson Bennett, that's his 17th touchdown pass of the year. He's already over 3,200 yards throwing, which is more than he had a year ago, even though he had more touchdowns last season in the... 15 game campaign that brought him a national championship. Ness in this game a year ago, Stetson Bennett threw 48 passes in the loss to Alabama. They went to him. They went to him on that drive. CBS Wednesday. Survivors all new with shifting alliances and heated competitions. It's anyone's game. Don't miss a new Survivor Wednesday at 8, 7 Central on CBS. By the way, special thanks to Jeff Probst for being the voice and the face of the opening tease for our game today. That was sensational. Jeff, yeah. thanks. That was and cool. And how about our guy, Bill O'Brien, dealing Putting it all fun. together. Yep. Had a bad night last night. He's a USC fan. Right. But a great morning right here with that tease. You can't have everything. Yep. <laughs> I wonder which one he'd trade if you asked <laughs> Now this should end the first quarter. LSU first down. Emory going to be dropped for a loss. Great closing there by Michael Williams off the edge. And it'll bring the first quarter to a close. An exciting one. A 96-yard block punt return. And then the quarterbacks went to work. Georgia at the end of one by a touchdown. To start the second quarter, the SEC Championship on CBS, presented by Dr. Pepper from Mercedes-Benz Stadium. LSU trailing Georgia by a touchdown as we head into quarter number two. A second down and 12. The mascots are going at it here. LSU at the 24-yard line. Run blitz, the throw high, incomplete, intended for the tight end. Georgia picking the ball up here. And, and that was incomplete. I think this was it was it caught in midair. Well, we better look at it again. It's an RPO. Gets there just as it happens. It bounces off his helmet. Yes, that's an interception. Thought it bounced off the ground. So did I. But next look, it bounces oh, right off the helmet, tipped again, and then intercepted. Unbelievable. <laughs> wow. I thought it hit the ground for sure. Well, we saw it bounce. We just didn't know it had bounced off the helmet. Oh, gosh, watch it. Boom. Nice defense off his Doink. helmet. Tip yeah. by Bullard. Intercepted. That's the ultimate tip drill right there. Again, off the noggin. And Smile Munden has a big smile because he was the <laughs> recipient of the second bounce. Great defense again from the secondary on the RPO. Boom, boom. You got it. 
First interception of the year from London and Georgia sets up shot. Great field position at the 22. Let's see if they go for a quick strike. Bennett does. Got it. McConkey touchdown. Twenty two yards. Stetson Bennett to land McConkey. And how about this design by Todd Munkin, the offensive coordinator? Land McConkey's the best route runner on this Georgia football team. He puts him in motion, then asks him to run an inside route. Comes in motion, goes upfield, gets outside technique, bad technique. Man-to-man -man coverage, terrible technique. Gave him the inside. That was a gift, but the gift was delivered right on target by quarterback Benson. And he turns around and looks at the bench and goes, I can do this all day. The guy is cocky, isn't he? Yep. He should be. Stetson Bennett says, I can do this. The mailman with the delivery. First of all, it started with one of the weirder interceptions you're ever going to see in any game. Off the helmet, off the fingertips, into Smile Munden. And then, quick strike. Yeah, and this program was built with five stars, but a walk-on and a three-star just put a touchdown on the board for Georgia. For four minutes today, and they've got 21 points. So Ugg is a happy dog right now. Spot Lesney will kick it away. LSU will let this one go. Bring it out to the 25-yard line. We we're just going to bring Gene Steratore in and welcome him to be in the booth with us when that weird interception happened. Also, the rocking ball on the field goal. And I got my buddies at Tony's right now going, I didn't know you could run a field goal back for a touchdown. Yeah, it's a scrimmage kick. You know, it was a great play, very alert. And listen, guys, I can tell you, for years, I've listened to these two great voices. Now when I look to my left and actually <laughs> see you, it's a surreal moment. It's so yeah, great Gene, to be with you. You say it's that same thing to Nance and Romo <laughs> every week. I don't believe it. Good to have you with us, man. <laughs> great job, Dan. It's great having him. That way we don't have to see everything. We got an expert over there, right? Exactly. Jaden Daniels hit as he throws, completes it. Another great throw. And almost a first down. Remember, he gets an interception on that play, but it was actually Javon Buller, number 22, Javon Buller, that made the play. That's tough throwing it. You got that big guy coming in on you. Can feel him. He's got a mouthful of Jalen Carter yep. right there. But they got nine out of it as he hung in there. Pressure coming again. This one is an overthrow. Incomplete. Intended for Brian Thomas again. And Jalen Carter making another pile back there. I think it'd be the first non-quarterback taken in the draft. Bill Anderson's a project, but this guy, to me, is a load inside. Last year it was Jordan Davis who got all the press, but this guy was almost as effective. And since he got healthy after the Oregon game, and it took a long time, he's changed the defense to make him that much better. Yeah. When Harold Perkins Jr. came on for LSU, they changed. And when this guy got healthy, so did Georgia. Third down. It was a big third down to try to stay on the field here for LSU, down two touchdowns. Mason Taylor moves over on the left-hand side. They give it to Josh Williams, and he's going to get dropped for a loss. So I think right there with that call, you can see that this LSU staff does not believe Jaden Daniels is 100%. In the past, you would see that quarterback power or quarterback sweep to the outside. This time they say, we're going to try to take him on inside. Nothing. Nothing there at all. Romel Walthauer said, oh, uh -uh. And it's fourth down and punting time for LSU. Jay Bramlett to kick. And Lad McCockey, who's got a touchdown catch already today, back as the punt returner around the 30 yard line. McCockey has to backpedal and call for the fair catch around the 17 or 18 yard line. You get the idea that McCockey saw the last punt, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't want that to happen. Don't want that again.
it. Speaking of Ladd McConkey, here's Jenny. For Ladd McConkey and his family, this connection to Georgia, it runs deep. Now, Kirby Smart first saw McConkey's videos on YouTube, but Coach recalled the last name. Get this, back in the day, Kirby went on an official visit to Georgia with Ladd's father, Benji. Now, fast forward to January 2020, the day Kirby offered Ladd the opportunity to play for the Bulldogs. It wasn't until the very next morning that he realized the significance of the day. McConkey, he had lost his grandfather to cancer on that very day in 2016. And guys, he writes 12016 on his towel to honor his late grandfather, Vic McConkey, to this day. Yeah, he has become a, a special player. And, you know, like in Georgia lore, they're going to talk about this guy in Stetson Bennett for totally, a long time. Totally. Earned every every spot, every snap Lad McConkey has going up against all those highly recruited receivers. First down for the 17. Jaden Edwards goes for three or more. Ness, you know, we talked about Todd Bunkin calling plays. How would you like to be Matt House now, defensive coordinator for LSU? He's been gearing up his defense all week. We got to stop the run. We got to stop the run. So the last two drives, Stetson Bennett burns them. Yep. So now, now what do you do? You get your guys there. We go. We got to stop the run and the pass. <laughs> that's <laughs> shit. It's a little harder that's to do. A little harder to do. They, you know, you got to force them to pass, and they burn you bad. The toss to Edwards. LSU stretches it out nicely. Very little gain. Maybe a yard will bring up third down and four or five. They have been successful so far, though, staying strong and not giving up those big gains in the running game. That was early. That was the game plan because Ali Gay and B.J. Ojolari, they got hammered a little bit against that Texas A&M team, and you knew Georgia would come out and attack them. Yep, and in Georgia powered Georgia Tech to 200 and almost 270 yards on the ground last week and yet here it is number 13 throwing it around for the change of pace today third and five and this time they do run it for a first down at Kendall Milton There you go. You know, you're thinking now this time pass. Watch LSU turn around. Linebackers are searching up wide receivers. And the call by co offensive coordinator Munkin is going, no, 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 no. We're going to run it three straight times again. Keep them off balance. Get the first down. Kendall Milton, Kenny McIntosh, Dejon Edwards. That's the trio of running backs for Georgia. Milton stays in there. Had a good game against Georgia Tech last week with 56 yards on the ground and a touchdown. Just got the Bulldogs a first down that time on the 29. Jackson Bennett, plenty of time, deep middle, got it complete. And it's Rosalie Jack Saints, first down Georgia. Oh, what a nice job by Jack Saint that time. He finds some open space, this area right here, and then he just kind of drifts. Where am I? Where am I? Let me find more open space. And then against the momentum, Going to the outside, he reaches back wow. and snatches it. Yeah. Beautiful. Nice catch. And again, the quarterback is thrown into the open space. He's hoping his receiver and him will be on the same page. But if they're not, you got one of those guys to make the catch. Throwing his guys open right now. Yes, he is. Pickup of 17 more. First down at a 46. Milton. Busts it outside. Kendall Milton. About 25 more on that one. Going by that, you got big, big tight end, gets the block. Oh, look at that block by Washington at the end man on the line of scrimmage. Dylan Bell is downfield, but Washington cleans it up. First down at the 30. They go right back to Milton on a toss, but he's going to lose a couple of yards. Watch Bowers and Washington, the two unicorns, two different types, 19 and 0. Bowers gets one guy. Inside number zero, Rosemary Jack Saint gets his block. Point of attack, three on three. They all do their job. Milton does his work. McIntosh comes in to give him a breather. As they continue to rotate the tailbacks. Second down at 11. The LSU 31. Georgia up two touchdowns with 10 minutes to go in the second quarter. I think this is Mitchell one on one down here. Dangerous player. Then it goes left side to Bowers. And it's going to bring up third down. Yep. And Mitchell was wide open on the plate. Turned around and looked at the bench and go, I got it. I know I tripped one time. <laughs> but I got it. I'm coming off the interview. Watch the ball down here. The ball went the other way. 
But this is what George is hoping for is Mitchell to be healthy. Look at that route. As they enter the playoffs, they need number five. He's the guy that can separate. And as we said, has not been healthy most of the year. Stetson Bennett, 9 of 11, 112 yards and two touchdowns. Three-man rush. Bennett thought about running. Now he will. And he's not going to get the first down. So the defense that time from Matt House was, let's drop back and keep our eyes on the quarterback. Greg Brooks yep. brings him down. Athlete, watch. Just rush three, drop, drop, keep your eyes on the quarterback. And then when he scrambles, close ground. Space players. LSU has great athletes in space, and they make the stop. Jack Bud Lesney is 23 of 25 on the year. Hit a 50-yarder last week against Georgia Tech. And he'll try one from 43 out of a Stetson Bennett hole. Bud Lesney has hit his last 11 field goal tries. Tried to back in. He tried to go to the right, then it hooked at the end, but not enough. Hits the upright. No good. Watch this. This thing had some action. It was going to the right, then back to the left. That looks way wide, doesn't it? Yep. And it hooks late, but not enough. So Georgia fails to add to their lead. We're still at 21-7 here in the second quarter. He's tried to make plays, but there's been some plays, hasn't there? Well, it sure has. First to block field goal, and Chris Smith waited until it was in its final rocking motion at the four-yard line and said, I think I'm going to run the other way with it. These are not things you just see every day. And then the pass intended for Jack Besh. Besh uses his noggin. The interception leads to a touchdown for Georgia, and then uh, hit upright from Bud Lesney on that last play. It's just some of the action here in the first half. Oh, wow. Almost got to that ball. He did, but he didn't catch it. So I was figuring they might go to the wide receivers on this drive. It's been all passing. Not much running progress for this LSU team. The receivers are probably coming to the bench saying, we can get open, we can get open. The problem is, can that offensive line hold up? Because I think 7, 8, 11, 10, they can get open for LSU. Second down and 10 at the 25 for the Tigers. All the receivers bunched in tight in this situation. Jaden Daniels goes down the middle, and that one's in and out of the hands of Booty, the Teddy receiver. And Dumas Johnson, the inside linebacker, made the hit. Sure does. This is a strike inside, but watch. Dumas Johnson anticipates it. One hand on the right side, knocks it down with his left hand. Good defense. Butkus finalist. Play in that middle linebacker. And Daniels going deep. Man out there, almost got to it, and no flags. That was Kamari Lassiter in coverage. I know it's hard to fault the quarterback when you're throwing it 50 yards downfield, but if he thrown it a little earlier, he actually underthrew the ball. You see neighbors have to slow down, hopes he gets an interference, but Lassiter doesn't do enough to get the call. So, running situation again. Punt, a block field goal, a touchdown, an interception, and a punt. There's only... One bright spot in there. And McConkey is back around the 35 yard line. Rambler. Front will back McConkey up to around the 24 on the fair catch. And 7.54 remaining in the second quarter, and Georgia leading by two touchdowns. It's time to test your knowledge with today's AFLAC trivia question. Which is the only three loss team? to win the SEC championship game. Right now, LSU 9-3 coming into this one. Georgia undefeated at 12-0, 8-0 in the regular season in the SEC. And going back to work, and Adonai Mitchell again is in the Georgia lineup. They've tried to go to him once. He was probably open another time. Let's see if they try him sometime in this drive. There's AD. John Edwards in the backfield was catching Bennett. But everybody moved except the center snapping the ball. Full start. 59 on the offense. Five-yard penalty. First down. 
Keep going. Kirby says, let's play. It's Rax. You know, talking about Stetson Bennett again, you know, the last two games he threw for 140 and 116 yards, but the previous 14 games he threw for over 200. Yep. So they got it when they won it. They kind of tucked it away against Kentucky. It was a low possession football game, kind of cold weather. And uh, you can see when they want to throw the ball, they got weapons. There's McCarthy coming out behind the quarterback. Dejan Edwards trying to follow his blockers. Decent game, still going to bring up third down. Micah Baskerville in on the stop. And the man down. And that's Makai Garner. Yeah, the corner. They already had Jay Ward out there. We're worried about that corner spot already moving to safety, and this time Garner tries Ooh. to take it on, but that is not easy yeah. with those massive linemen. Knee sort of buckled on him there as he got run over. We'll check on him when we come back. Bring you key highlights of today's other championship games. And BJ's wearing silver shoes. Those things are official, BJ. Nice. He kicks it out. There you go. Yeah, very nice. See you guys. Nice Coming to know that they're minutes. listening. How would you like to be one of those corners nests? And you come up one time, Jay Ward, and he takes him low. It's penalty. Right. This guy does it right. He gets a knee injury. Yeah. Makai Garner, <laughs> uh, Louisiana Lafayette transfer out of Mesquite, Texas, is a guy that tried to take on the Georgia lineman and paid the price. We hope that he'll be able to come back in. Mentioned earlier in the broadcast, Georgia's won 30 of their last 31 games. Look at the group they've joined. Bad, huh? Man. Best one loss stretches with at least a national championship. And Kirby and his crew hoping to do something last year's team couldn't do. That's win the SEC championship game. Right now, they got a 14 point lead. LSU thinking about a blitz for Baskerville. Now he backs out. I might have said earlier it was going to be third down and second down at 11. Baskerville does come on the blitz. Stetson Bennett fires a little too far in front of the intended receiver, Marcus Rosemary Jack Saint, incomplete. So we just talked about Jay Ward playing out at the corner spot. He's kind of a hybrid, plays a little bit of the nickel back and everything else, but nice job on that one. Stetson Bennett was indicating somebody got hit in the face. Personal foul, roughing the passer on the defense, number 23. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot, automatic first down. I guess you know when you get hit in the face, that's, right? That's, that's for sure. When you said someone got hit in the face, <laughs> it'd be me. <laughs> Let's see if it is. Yep. 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 It's a right cross from Baskerville. That's an easy call for the quarterback. <laughs> And he still almost completed that pass, so he gets the first down out of it anyway, out to the 38-yard line. Midway point, second quarter, Georgia 21-7. Kenny McIntosh trying to keep his balance, but his knee hit down after a yard or two, I think. Harold Perkins is the closest guy to him. McIntosh comes out. How about this? Full substitution by Georgia, and LSU brings no one on the field. In a rebuild like Brian Kelly is doing this year, you wonder if we I have a best anybody. 11 out there already. That's right. Bowers moves into a slot on the right side. And Bennett going deep for McConkey overshot him. Just enough of a pass rush that Stetson Bennett had to let that ball go before he wanted to. He feels the pass rush coming from his right side, and he says, I got to pick a spot, a little bit more air on it, and McConkey might have been able to find it. I think find it was a key word. He looked up there and didn't see it until it was past him. Yeah, and here you see like shots of the fans. When you look yeah, up. exactly. Got that ring in the IDF TV. Third down and eight. Slips a little bit as he throws. Still got it complete to midfield to McConkey in a first down. 
I didn't think he was going to get enough on this ball, but he did. Yeah, Broderick Jones has got the key matchup over here. You got Harold Perkins. No, it was Algilari that time coming around the end. Got just enough of him. Well, fake late throw over the middle and still got it complete. You know, on that one right there, now that's complete. But you got the feeling, as he looks over, that if that wouldn't have worked, he'd have had to talk to Kirby yes. Smart when he got over, right? He had a personal conversation yes. with this, the coach. This didn't work. Now watch how he lets this go. He'd be going, we don't need this. Just take the easy one. He looks over, oh, I don't coach. I know, I shouldn't have done that. Dominic Blaylock <laughs> with the first down catch. You could almost feel it when he let it go. Yeah, he had to look to the sideline immediately. First down at the 39. They've mixed it up, run and pass in the last couple of minutes on this drive. Brock Bowers in motion. Two yard game for Kendall Milton. Great story for this LSU defense as they look at it. You know, 21 7. Remember, one of them was a, you know, Special teams touchdown. They have bottled up the run. Okay, they're not getting losing the line of scrimmage. It's just been this passing by Stetson Bennett has been too much for them. But they got to hold on here. Remember, they won the toss and took the ball. George is going to get it to start the second half. It's a key, key part of the game to stay in it if you're LSU. We've seen Georgia enough to know or at least think that they do whatever they need to do. If it's run, run. If it has to be through the air, they're doing pretty well at that, too. That pass intended for Rosemary Beck St. Incomplete Ward in the coverage. And Jay Ward again got physical with Rosemary St. Jack that play. Could not get loose. Good coverage. If you're playing bump and run, you got to win at the line of scrimmage. And Jay Ward did great coverage. Get the feeling those. LSU DBs in the NFL, Patrick Peterson and those guys go, that's the way you do it. That's the way we do it when I was here. I mentioned only a couple of players played on that 2019 LSU team. Jay Ward was one of them. And Micah Baskerville was the other, both playing on the defense. Third down and eight. Bennett fires down the middle and complete first down and it's Dominic Blaylock again Stetson Bennett felt the, it was an all-out blitz on him and he knew he had one-on-one -on -one. he just had to wait just long enough he can feel he sees it man to man right in the face of the blitz he lets that ball go courageous throw Warren McClendon shaking up on the play for Georgia back around the 47-yard line. You ever see one of those linebackers coming at you with that 4-6, four, 4-5 four, speed, and you know you got to wait as long as you can and then let it go. Your release becomes very tackled. McClendon, yep, from behind. I think it's one of his own guys. It is. Willick gets it. Watch the stuck by coming inside by Bakersfield on the play starts out over to the right side and then comes around loops around Stetson Bennett's going to throw left and he gets him right about now he sees him and then he throws it and anticipate great play by the quarterback but McClendon out of Marius Mims comes in to take his spot first down Georgia at the 25 They'll flare it out and McIntosh got about four out of it Georgia's converted two third down and eights on this drive. Courtesy of Stetson Bennett. Ward lost his hat, so he's going to have to be out of play. Yeah, this is the drive that Georgia wanted right here. You're up 21-7. You know, you start with it's about, about three and a half, almost a four-minute drive. You bleed the clock here, put either a field goal or a touchdown on the board, and try to get to halftime with a big lead. And then, as you said, come out of the locker room, getting it first to start the third. We move under four minutes, second down and seven. A cocky in motion. Bennett. Going to go out to his safety valve. McConkey knew he was out there the whole time. And he actually picked up about five yards on that. So when you talk to defensive coordinators, they go the underrated part about playing against Stetson Bennett is the guy's a veteran. He's been in this thing six years. He knew he had McConkey to the left side all the way, checked everybody out, dumped it off. And they come the other way to Bowers. Bowers made one guy miss, got the first down. 
And the drive continues. Kind of, you feel for these defenses. You know, remember this Georgia team can mash you with the running game. Now they're throwing tight ends, wide receivers, running backs. You got to defend the whole field, and all five eligible receivers get the ball. Back in the red zone at the 14-yard line. And the LSU fans pretty quiet right now. Brian Kelly has promised that his team would have fight in this game. They have, but it's hard to fight against five guys and 53 yards wide. The ball goes everywhere. They got out Washington in motion. And that ball drops by Dylan Bell. They had a wide receiver screen working out there. Brian Kelly in the SEC championship game and his first season in Baton Rouge. Georgia only 53 yards rushing. Everybody right. thought this game would be played at a phone booth, and it has not been, has nope. it? Uh -uh. Wide open. This is a cell phone game. <laughs> yep. Benny, down the middle, to the end zone. Touchdown, Donnell Washington. The big guy in the back of the end zone. One unicorn's fast, the other unicorn is big. And you like to throw to the big one over the middle of the field. Just throw it high, easy. What a pair. We're not kidding. Nobody in college football gains more yards throwing the ball to their tight ends and the running backs than Georgia. Utah's close, but nobody does it better than Georgia. Bob Leslie in for the point after. 76 yard drive in 13 plays a little over five minutes and Stetson Bennett's got his third scoring strike of the first half to big O. Twisted T fans love football so we're surprising them with a Twisted T drop. We're kicking off game day with Twisted T hard iced tea. Cold, refreshing and goes down smooth with 5% alcohol. Twisted tea tastes like real iced tea because it's made with real brewed tea. Twisted tea, hard iced tea. Keep it twisted. Coming up on the Geico Halftime Report, Zook and Rick and BJ will break down the first half and bring you the key highlights from today's other championship games. And one of the highlights you'll see is Darnell Washington. All about 6'8", about 275 pounds of him running like this and running away from Baskerville for the touchdown. And LSU now has got two minutes and 48 seconds to do something about this. Before their first snap, we're going to answer our AFLAC trivia question for you, which was... Yeah. Which is the only three-loss team to win the SEC championship game. Well, it was LSU over Tennessee back in 2001. So they've done it before 21 years ago. And Matt Mock was a hero in that one. Came out when Ron Davy got hurt in the yep. first half. Came off the bench. That number 18 became famous. It's an honor to wear number 18 now for LSU since that year. Josh Williams dropped for a loss. By Jalen Carter. And with the 28 to 7 game, you got to feel like LSU can't just give away a, a, a possession here. You know, I mean, like, they don't want to make a mistake, but. Uh, got to let it rip. You got to. Got no choice. Jalen Daniels would like to, but Jalen Carter's got him again. And I wonder if Kirby Smart will dare take a timeout here. Did you see that at the end of the play? Yes, he lifted him yes. up with one hand. One hand. My, oh my. I'll tell you, I think he's the best non-quarterback draftable player. Might even include those guys. But look at him fight through two people. And then watch this. Lift him up. With one hand. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> That's like, I'm going to be the number one draft pick right there. The crowd is in a frenzy over that play. And Jalen Daniels is not so happy about it. But he didn't he did throw him down. No, he the, actually lifted him up and then let him totally. down. 
remember your that ankle will not be 100% for Jaden Daniels till the spring football. What a play. Gee. He reminds me of Chris Smith, the old Mississippi State defensive tackle, playing for the Kansas City Chiefs. Just a man inside. You can shift him to the defensive end, and Chris Jones, excuse me, Chris Jones for the Kansas City Chiefs. Jalen Carter is that type of player. And Jalen is. Jalen Daniels is going in for the medical tent, and Garrett Nussmeyer will have to take over. There's his numbers on the year, and you heard Brian Kelly tell Jenny in the pregame, we got two good quarterbacks. If something happens to Jalen, we're going to try to run our offense just like we normally would. But this is a different situation against a different group of dogs that Garrett Nussmeyer finds himself in. And a third down and 16 doesn't help. Deep down the middle into some traffic incompletes. And Chris Smith was almost coming up with an interception. Brian Kelly said, Gary Nussmeyer is a gunslinger. Comes in on third and long and slings it. Yes, he does. Lucky he got away with it, though. Yeah. Foot higher could have been intercepted. Ashawn Booty was the closest LSU player. Yeah, and here's the problem. They had plenty of time for Georgia, right? They got two timeouts left, too, and two minutes to work with. Jay Bramblett, the punt from his own 10. Lad McConkey, fair catch, but great field position for Georgia around the 41 42 yard line. And 158 to go. Thursday, it's a new episode of TV's big hit comedy, Ghosts. The show's critics call laugh out loud funny, delightful, and genuinely hilarious. See why the folks believe in ghosts. It's Thursday, right after Young Sheldon on CBS. Brad Nessler, Gary Danielson, Jenny Dell, Gene Steratore with you at Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta, where it's all number one Georgia right now, and it could get worse for LSU if Stetson Bennett has anything to say about it. Yeah, Marius Mims is in at right tackle. Clenda did not come back in the game yet. There's the numbers sensational first half numbers the guy who last year was the MVP of the playoff game and the national championship game looks like he's maybe heading for the MVP of the SEC title game. This is Kiaris Jackson. Jackson big gainer shoved out of bounds on the far side. But it's a first down at the 39 big one cleanup block at the line of scrimmage. And it's Bowers who yep. gets it. Who else, right? Yep. And then 19 yards later, Kiaris Jackson with a stiff arm to the face mask. And no penalty on that, so it's first down Georgia at the 39. Carry on the counter and he busts off the left side and goes to 15. Back to back plays, clock stops. Two minute offense can't be any better than this. Safe plays and finally the counter. And then all game it's been here, it's been there, but they haven't busted it till now. It's a first down at the 24. And still a minute and a half to go in the half. Quick throw, McConkey broke a tackle, heading to the end zone, got it down to about the three. And took a big hit, and he is shaking up. Hopefully he just took an, one of the helmet or something to the knee, and it's not one of those, it's one of those bruises. Again, Bowers gets the block, McConkey pulls through. And then gets kind of landed on, doesn't he, at the end of that play? I thought the big hit came up high, but I wasn't watching. Well, watch legs. at the end. He gets landed oh. on right there on that left knee. Oh, yeah. Oh, right knee gets tucked underneath him. And from the AT&T 5G pylon cam, he's coming right towards you. And there's the pileup, and there goes our camera. And McConkey is trying to walk it off by himself. That didn't work right there. Kiaris Jackson let me help you. Yeah, and there's a reason he's got that sleeve on, so probably just tweaked it again, right, on that right leg. One of the toughest dudes his size you'll ever meet. 
And has Georgia first and goal. So Georgia hasn't even had to take any gambles with any play so far. Two quick screens and a counter play. Yeah, landed right on that right knee. Yeah, it's not supposed to go that direction. So it's first and goal at the two. McConkey trying to walk it off, but probably heading to the medical tent. Meanwhile, his teammates out there with a chance to really make this uncomfortable for LSU. Dejan Edwards, not this time. Good job by Baskerville to stand him up. May have lost a yard, actually. I think Kirby is going to take a timeout here. They got two. Yep. Good management. Got two. Still can call any play in your playbook down here with one timeout in your pocket. College football playoff standings as we came into the weekend. Remember, Georgia undefeated, Michigan undefeated. Tonight they take on Gary's Boilermakers for the Big Ten title. Yeah. TCU, the number three, lost to Kansas State in overtime for the Big 12. If you missed it, USC lost to Utah last night. So there's going to be, <laughs> there's going to be some fireworks. Yeah. And two pretty big name schools sitting there at five and six. Yeah, aren't right? they? <laughs> So Bennett has some final words with Kirby Smart before heading back out to a second and goal. This time at the three. Yeah, I, I think the call here is a pass, though. That way you got third down if you can keep your timeout alive for third down and go either way. If you run here and don't make it, you probably have to take another timeout, and then you have to pass. So right here, I think this is a passing down. Gives you more flexibility on third down if it's not good. Both tight ends, Bowers and Washington on the right side. Here's the rollout. Bowers is in the end zone. So is Dylan Bell. Touchdown, Georgia. Yep, that's the strategy. With a little rollout, the quarterback is athletic. Bowers was just as open. I think Bowers jumps in the end zone and go, come on, I can't get any open in this. But Stetson felt well, Bowers goes here. Dylan Bell comes across. Both are wide open. Had him in the corner, takes him in the middle. Perfect decision by Stetson Bennett. What a half. What by a Stetson half. Bennett, huh? Yep. What a half. But Leslie's extra point is good. Georgia had five plays in that drive. 19 yards, 15 yards, 22 yards. They lost one on a run. And the fifth play capped a 58-yard march in a minute 26. And Georgia's got 35 first-half points. Yeah, the way Stetson Bennett is playing, he won't have to look over to the bench anymore when he takes one of those chances, will he? Uh -uh. Everything's going just too good. He's in total charge. Fourth touchdown pass of the half. And Georgia en route to being 13-0 and heading to the playoff. They still got a half to go, but they're going to get the ball to open the third quarter, and they've got right now a 28-point lead. And remember, if they finish this off the way they should now, they started the season here. Their SEC championship here in the first playoff game will be back here. Peach Bowl will be here in uh, about 28 days. The, the uh, Georgia players will be buying apartments. <laughs> so. so LSU will come out to the 25 yard line in a big hole. In Vesco bringing you today's scholar athletes. Noah Kane for LSU. Lab McConkie who's had a huge game here in the first half for Georgia. In Vesco proud to support student athletes on and off the field with a donation of $1,000 to both LSU and Georgia's general scholarship funds. And Jaden Daniels has come out of the tent and out of the field. So showing some guts on a wheel that oh, no was wobbly that. coming yeah, in. No doubt about that. We saw his toughness against Texas A&M. Turn on that tape if you want to see a tough football player. A quick throw and got it out to Mason Taylor, the tight end. Pickup of eight. And he's limping badly just coming back to the line of scrimmage. Yeah. 
He's had way too much of Jalen Carter and company in this first half. Daniels, nice catch and a first down. Brought in by John Emery, the one-handed it. Yeah, right now, George is conceding the short passes. They don't want to get beat deep. They're playing the clock right now. Smart. You don't want to play those short balls and get, have one thrown over your head. Short over the middle this time. And that's Booty. He picks up nine more. 19 seconds. They've got two timeouts. LSU left. should take a timeout. And they do. Right now, Jaden Daniels was wishing he had one of those receiver radios in his helmet so he could talk to the coach without having to limp all the way over, right? Yeah, really. Boy, Emory's actually helping, helping him over him to the sideline. How about that? Boy. Had a good half. If he yeah. just not been involved in a few of those pileups. Check in with Jenny. I wish I had more information, but guys, Jaden Daniels went straight into the injury tent, and then he came straight out, grabbed his helmet, and went onto the field. So, yeah. Yeah, right, right now, even when he's not hit, every throw is torquing that ankle. This was the yeah, play he, that Jalen Carter let him down easily. Yeah, he actually tweaked it before Carter lifted right. him. Four-man rush for the dogs. Daniels, nice throw and catch out to Besh. How about that by Besh right there? 35-7 game. You're laying it out for your teammates right now. For the guys that played here before, you go catch that ball. You know you're going to get hit. And they spike it at the 35 to save us some time and the timeout. So they got time for two more plays, probably. Besh is the guy that had the crazy play where the ball hit his helmet. Yeah, and he's, he's just feeling like, I got a bad ankle, it's sprained. I'm not going to injure it anymore. It's a sprained ankle, and I feel like I want to stay in this game. Throw the ball from the pocket. You're not going to scramble anymore, is he? Okay. Georgia three-man rush, late blitz coming. Daniels delivers again. Timeout at LSU, get a field goal try. First down at the 23 to Booty. A lot of courage on that drive, wasn't there? No doubt. Led by their quarterback, Besh goes up and catches that ball in traffic when he knows he's going to take one. Puts a field goal on the board. That was a pride drive by LSU right there. Yeah, they'll try to put a field goal on the board. The last one was blocked, but, but it definitely got him in field goal range. I mean, he he got, actually got hit on the top of the head on that play, too. Have been called. I think Alexander Bear Alexander, number 99, swatted him right across the head. Damian Ramos, who had one blocked earlier, then it went 96 yards the other way by Chris Smith. We'll try one here for 42. And let's see if Georgia's going to take a timeout. Yeah, I, I wonder if they were. You know, look it up. They all were looking over at the bench. Are we on defense safe? Are we trying to block the field goal? And Kirby said, let's just take our time here and get lined up right. Jaden Daniels is going to get a head start to the locker room. Yeah, and then you wonder, you know, as this game goes forward, how, how much more are we going to see of Jaden Daniels if this game gets any worse, right? Yeah. And a quick timeout. Jaden limps to the locker room. Ramos will try from 42. The one that was blocked was a 32-yard attempt. Try to get some points here to close the gap a little bit before halftime. Ramos drills it. Good kick, and the rush was excellent by Georgia. They got close to him, but he put it through. Yeah, the timing had to be good. On the block, the snap was a little high. It looks like here, everything was this time low, but they got it off and almost blocked by Lassiter, didn't it? Yep. Good job by LSU to get something out of that drive, and they did it because their quarterback's got a lot of guts. Sure does. 
That ends the half, but it's 35 to 10 right now with undefeated. And he's doing it again. Can this guy go back to back national championships? Incredible. They're halfway to the playoff. We know that. And this Georgia team is built so many different ways. You know, I mean, they can run the ball at you, tight ends, wide receivers. They've just got a lot of ways to beat you. Oh, big hit. Uh, Dejon Edwards on the return. It was Harold Perkins down on special teams to make the stop. Take a look at our trends in that first half. We just talked about it. Most tied for most in the first half in an SEC championship game, tying Mac Jones in 2020 against Florida. Jaden Daniels played really, really well and, and courageously, and <laughs> courageously, and knocked around. And of course, crazy plays. 96-yard block field goal is the longest play in SEC championship history by a yard. I think BJ got it right. Brian Jones said, "If you want to make it a game, LSU, you got to stop them right now." Now let's see what they can do. And there's the two tight ends, both that caught touchdown passes, going from right to left to set things up for Kenny McIntosh to break one off the left side and eight yards, maybe nine, as he pushes his way out of bounds. It does feel like the LSU team playing courageously, doing all they can. They just don't have the depth. This team is not built as deep. They can't substitute. They tire out. And you got the feeling that. Georgia, as this game goes on, is going to start pounding on him. There's Jaden Daniels yep. over there trying to encourage his teammates. So it looks like we're going to see him when they get the ball back. We'll have to wait and see. Second down and two. The toss to McIntosh. First down and a bunch more. Out to the 38. Yeah, we, we wonder as this game goes on and you know, you're shaking hands with coaches. Uh, you might not be going back in the game, Maybe right? Not. Maybe that is what it means. Yes. And that would be a whole bunch of Garrett Nussmeyer as BJ predicted. And the Geico halftime report first and ten Georgia. Quick slant complete. Rosemary Jack Saint out to midfield. Throw and catch and pick up a 12 more. Yeah, he had the option. You could go left to go to the quick screen. You got the easy one to the right side. Nobody over your slot receiver. Just take it right in front of you. Right at the midfield strike. Flags down. Stetson Bennett hit as he throws. And is it intercepted? It's very close. And again, penalty markers on the play. I think LSU was off sides, and that forced the movement from Georgia. Let's see what they call here. David Smith will let us know. Right now they're still Eventually. must be differing opinions here on what happened, right? Meanwhile, Greg Brooks is saying, I thought I picked that thing off. Here's a call. Offside on the defense, number 11, five yard penalty, replay first down. Ali Gay is the guy that jumped. Veteran defensive end playing in his fifth year. Yeah, I thought the movement first came inside. Yes, and that caused Washington to move with the inside movement. He was reacting to the movement by LSU. Good call. So give Georgia a free five. And into LSU territory at the 45. Josh lost the football, scooped it up on his own, and then is hit and dropped at the 47. Going into this game, if we talked about George in this game, a lot of people would say if they don't turn it over, yeah. it's going to be hard <laughs> for them to lose. This time, Harold Perkins knocks it right out of his hand, trying to make the tackle, and scooped up, as now said. Georgia came in minus two turnover ratio as Kenny McIntosh is getting a little love and a little lecturing from the head coach over there about dropping the ball and in the meantime Kendall Milton comes in to take his spot. Yeah they only got four of them so they got three more guys that can go. <laughs> Here, they fake the end around. Bennett now will come back to the man that was coming in the round and that's Arian Smith one of the fastest guys on the Georgia team. Nice open field tackle that time by Ryan number 15. Sage Ryan. Open field tackle on a fast football player. Wanted to go deep, good coverage. Nowhere to go with the ball, but the drop off. Watch his tackle. That's a big tackle. Right no out. One on one against a big time athlete. Ryan gets him down. Wrapped him up and twisted him down. 
Another good looking play from Georgia though. Even didn't, didn't gain that much, but it did get him a first down. Bowers shifts from one side to the other. From the 40. Kendall Milton into the middle of the pack. Broke one tackle. Got five out of that somehow. Running tough. And actually his first start of the year was last week in the win over Georgia Tech. Had kind of a groin strain in the Auburn game and that limited him at times and then McIntosh kind of took over and as Gary said they just keep rotating guys in there now. They don't have a big thousand yard back but they've got one that came in with 650 and one with 420 and another one with 600 so those are the three guys. Just one note again Georgia. Or McClendon still not back in the game. Number 70, they're starting off late offensive tackle. On second and five, balls out again. And this time LSU's got it. Some confusion between who was going to keep that, whether Bennett was going to pull it out or whatever, and then it just harmlessly lay there before Jacqueline Roy covered it, but there is a flag. I wonder if Stetson Bennett will be called for blocking one of the players for LSU trying to go for the fumble. Yeah, he wasn't going for the ball. No, and he was not in his vision, so he was out of his vision, came from the angle, and threw his body low. I think Bennett could get called here. Watch Stetson. He thinks it. Personal foul. Illegal block all the way. So number 13 on the offense while the ball was loose. That penalty is declined. The fumble recovery by LSU. First down, LSU. So because the ball had not been recovered yet, they had to decline the 15 yards. Interesting. So that's about the only thing that has not gone well today for number 13. Didn't quite get it to Milton or Milton didn't quite take it. <laughs> LSU says we... So Garrett Nussmeyer, it's his game the rest of the way, it appears, Garrett. Yep, it is, and uh, let's salute uh, Jaden Daniels. That thing probably stiffened up on him at a halftime, couldn't go. Think about this for LSU and what Jaden Daniels did. Remember that three-game stretch in the middle of the season when LSU had to do it or they'd have been, you know, bottom of the division. That three-game stretch, Jaden Daniels averaged 260 yards passing, 14 touchdowns, he threw seven and ran for seven. Those three games against Florida, Ole Miss, and Alabama made this season for LSU. No doubt. So Nussmeyer, the son of Doug Nussmeyer, the Dallas Cowboys quarterback coach, takes over. And wants to throw on first down following the fumble recovery. And he laid one in there to Booty. Tayshawn Booty, first down. Booty comes clear across the field on this one because Nussmeyer bought some time, laid it in. I thought Chris Smith had it all the way, but he waved at it and missed it. Picked up 20 yards on his first completion. Now they can go inside of the ground game to Josh Williams. And Williams got to about the 35. Let's get some injury updates from Jen. Yeah, we got some big injury updates on the Georgia sideline. So Warren McClendon and Lad McConkey, they are out for the rest of the game, dealing with the left knee injuries. And then Tyke Smith, the D-back, he has a right shoulder contusion. He may return, guys. I'm going to go check on what's going on on the LSU sideline. All right, Jenny, thanks. Nussmeyer in the oh, traffic. What Touchdown. Play. Malik Neighbors. How about that in relief duty? Malachi Starks, number 24, the deep safety, thought he had it all the way. But the gun by Garrett Nussmeyer beat him. He got it there so fast. Watch Starks right here, the freshman. He thinks, I got him, I got him, I got him. Whoa! I don't have him. AT&T 5G pylon cam. Malik Neighbors, the second touchdown catch of the year. And that's a big one. Well, BJ said they need to get a stop, and then they he need did. to get a score, and they're, they're doing that. I tell you, there's nothing I admire more than teams that are down when most of the fans and the people watching the game think it's over, and they just keep playing. Love it. 35-17. LSU, their backup quarterback with a rocket. Down to neighbors. And Garrett said, that's just how we drew that up when I was playing second string. <laughs> Vlad McConkey, who Jenny told us, will not return. He has one of the four touchdown passes thrown by Stetson Bennett today. 
Remember, it all started with that fumble recovery by Roy off the mishandled exchange between Bennett and Kendall Milton. And then they had to just go 57 yards to get a really nice touchdown pass from Nussmeyer to Neighbors. Let's take a look at the GMC game changer. This guy has changed things from the very beginning of the ball game. Four touchdown passes, two to his tight ends, that one to McConkey. This one down now Washington, the other one was Bowers, and then Dylan Bell right in the middle of the end zone. Yeah, that's the toughest part if you're a defense. You know, a go-to guy when you got one receiver, you can kind of lean your coverage to that guy. But this D offense, with the tight ends, the running backs, everybody involved, that's the strength of this offense. Georgia Diversity. has. They can run the ball with power, but they can spread it out in the passing game 21 for 26. That's... Quite impressive. Speaking of 21, that's how many guys have caught a pass for Georgia this year. So that's the spreading around Gary's talking about. And this time it's a nice and straight handoff to Dejon Edwards for five or close to it. So McIntosh bobbled one, he goes out of the game. <laughs> Milton bobbles one, he goes out of the game, and they bring in number 30, Edwards. And that's Sage Ryan heading to the locker room for LSU. Yards per carry, 4.4 for Georgia, 0.4 for LSU. Everybody's had trouble running on Georgia. They're number one in the country against the rush. Edwards going to be brought down two yards shy of the first down, third down, and two upcoming. Another good defensive play with this LSU defense. Those plays have been busting for big plays for the counter for Georgia the last few games. But so far in this game, you know, reasonable stops. Quick uh -oh. throw, and that's a one hopper. And Georgia's going to have to give it up. Yes, they are. Pulled the string on that one. Back to back self inflicted wounds by this Georgia football team. Kirby Smart sort of saying, come on, come on, come on, let's go. End of the half, that aggressive drive, putting a field goal up. Then after the turnover, a 10 points here on this LSU, and they get the ball back again. So Brett Thorson to punt. Gregory Clayton waiting back on the other end. Thorson, fair catch. Call for by Clayton around the 26-yard line. So, 9-27. Just five and a half minutes into this quarter, and LSU's got it back, and they've cut the lead to 35-17. The team faces their biggest threat yet, a nationwide network of serial killers. Stream the new series now exclusively on Paramount Plus. Head to ParamountPlus.com and try it free. So... LSU with a touchdown on their last drive, courtesy of Garrett Nussmeyer's arm. And they go back to work, forcing Georgia to punt. Yep, Jalen Carter has been blowing up plays at the end of the first half, but so far here, second half, the throwing game has been making the plays for LSU. Nussmeyer loads and is going to go long again. Man out there, got it! to the 15 neighbors again double coverage this time you just throw the ball deep even though Georgia puts two players on the receiver they got him inside out they got him bracketed throw the ball up where is it where is it neighbors knows where it is 49 yards later first down in the red zone at the 14 Nussmeyer again the fade to the corner Overshot his intended receiver. That was Brian Thomas. Garrett Nussmeyer said we're behind. I'm just letting it go. <laughs> he did. <laughs> Malachi Stark says, boy, I haven't seen this one all year. <laughs> this guy's got a rocket. So second down and 10. The ball just shaded inside the Georgia 15. Ute goes over, settles in the slot to the left side. Four receivers from Nussmeyer. Williams in motion out of the backfield. And this one's batted down. Just think about this uh, 
LSU team this year that's been in so much transition. Even at quarterback, as Jaden Daniels came in as a transfer, remember Max Johnson was a year ago the quarterback. Right. Miles Brennan was one of the guys they had in mind. Nussmeyer, Daniels, there was four different guys that uh, might have been the quarterback for this team this year. Jalen Carter was shaking his hand. I think he's the guy to knock that pass down, and I think it hurt a little bit. If anything on him ever hurts, well, it has this year, yeah. his ankle. Third down and ten. He got close to the last two plays, deflected the last one. There he is. Nussmeyer throws back across his body, completes it to Taylor. Taylor might have a first down. Spinning his way inside the five. Mason Taylor, the big catch to win the game against Alabama on the two-point play, and this time spins very close fourth down play. And now official is going to blow it dead here. They're going to bring a replay, a replay the review. The ruling on the field was the runner was short on the first down. I think this is worth a review, don't you? Absolutely. With a fourth down at about two feet, and Georgia kind of helped Taylor's way around that one when they were tackling him. They sort of spun him forward. Yep. I mean, Taylor kept his balance, figured out which way to go, north and south yeah. on the play. Catches it over the middle, and then just knows I got to spin and fall forward. He yeah. put his hand down to keep his balance without landing, and it's. I think it's even closer than at least what they have it. And yeah, I think his left elbow was down. I, I thought. I think it was a good call. Gene, what do you think? Really, really tight. Taylor does a great job of keeping his legs off of the ground as well after he kind of posts with the offhand. It looks like a good spot to me. I haven't seen an angle where I can see. Uh, we get a great look here of just posting with the right arm. Now watch how he straightens the legs out to not let them touch. And then as Gary said, there's the elbow where the ball is in relation to that. Looks to me like he had to get to the uh, to the five guys or to the uh, into the four and it looks like that elbow might be about a half yard shy of that based on the angles we've had what so an far. effort right here yeah. though body yeah. control Great the whole effort. thing freshman tight end he's going to be something he already is really good yep and remember they don't have the running quarterback right now but this is sneak territory sneak push territory don't you think after further review the ruling on the field stands it'll be fourth down So it's fourth down. It's not a full yard. Yep. This was a great effort to put the right palm down and then twist and keep his legs up. But right there, the elbow. And Georgia gets their defense back out there. Well, maybe 10 inches a foot at yeah. the most. That's what I said. It's not a yard. Yep. Oh, they're going to go shotgun. Josh Williams in the backfield with Nussmeyer. Three receivers to the right now. One coming back in motion. Josh Williams did not get it. Man, that's hard to believe. Shotgun give time for that defensive line to penetrate. I mean, I'm under center, sneaking it in a hole right over here. I'm getting up. I'm pushing. I'm doing everything I can. The penetration was too much. Jalen Carter got that big right arm in low. I, go, I, I said, they're in shotgun? And then Dumas Johnson cleaned up. So number 88 comes up with another big play for the Georgia defense. And they hold LSU out of the end zone. Georgia takes over on downs courtesy of number 88 making another sensational play. Watch him throw Emory Jones right out of the play. Jalen Carter tosses him and then comes in and makes the play. Emory Jones is a freshman, but he's 6'6", 335 pounds. Throws How strong him. that guy. And that was magnificent. <laughs> we saw him lift up the quarterback and put his arm up with one arm. And that time with his left cross. He takes Emory Jones and plants him in the backfield. Well, Georgia just outside its own five after stopping that fourth and short for LSU. McIntosh into the middle of the pile, and that pile pushes out to the 10. 
So we were talking about Jalen Carter on the sack of Jaden Daniels. Watch this if you missed this in the first half. He's got him wrapped up. Okay, now they're going to blow the whistle, and he's just going to. Okay, I got him with my <laughs> left hand. <laughs> That's just amazing. He's a man. He's a man. <clears throat> We're an NFL team. Do you have to watch any more tape than that right now? I don't think so. We're done. <laughs> Second and five. Nice play. Good play from the backside. Yeah, absolutely. And that was Allie Gay. Been around a long time. He's made a lot of good plays. And come in the back door this time. Right around the end right here. She just gets in there. Beats the block this time by Washington. Just Blows right through. Darnell Washington thinks he has him. Nope, he does not. Ali born in West Africa, didn't move to the United States till he got to Seattle when he was about 12 years old. Yeah, what do you call here if you're Todd Munkin, okay? I mean, do you trust Stetson Bennett enough? Seems like he's earned it. I would think. Nope, they go to Quick the door. Slip screen, yep. first down, a bunch more. Yep. Rosemary Jack Saints. He's got it all the way out to the 26 yard line. They let him throw, but they threw safely, right? They got it out there. Tried to throw a quick screen earlier on the last position. Stetson threw it into the ground. This time, remember, in college ball, you're allowed to block downfield if the pass is caught behind the line of scrimmage. Bowers is blocking. Another block, and boy, nice first down. Georgia needed that badly. That's the way you draw it up. Yep. Great blocking, pick up a big team, breathing room now to work from the 27 and maybe go back to the ground game at the six minute mark. Let's go, let's go. Kendall Milton. And Milton, good game for Georgia. So Todd Munkin dialing up the plays up there in the press box right there. Todd Munkin, his first job was at Grand Valley State as head coach, Brian Kelly. How That's about right. that? <laughs> He's hired the guy calling the plays today for the other team. Todd was a wide receiver coach as well at LSU. Little Grand Valley State in Michigan is where he got his start and where Brian Kelly earned his chops being a head coach. And worked his way up Central Michigan, Cincinnati, Notre Dame, and now here at LSU. Second and three. First down run. Kendall Milton open field. Milton in a foot race. Kendall Milton pushing tacklers off. He's all the way down. Pretty sure everyone got a good block here on this one. Now, just watch that front, that offensive line. Van Pan does a good job. Just told my gosh. Center, Cedric Van Pan, 63, takes the nose tackle completely out of the play. 50 yards later, he's at the 15 yard line. So that's why Georgia gets you. They kind of start wearing on you. That offensive line that's up for the Joe Moore Award is the best line in the country. Especially this group at LSU. I mean, they're fighting out here. They do not have the numbers to rotate in. McIntosh. He gets four more to the 11. Remember the earlier in the game when Georgia substituted in the middle of their drive and LSU looked to the sideline and the coach went, you, you're the guys. <laughs> you're going to have to stay out there. That's right. Kendall Milton. That was his longest run of the year, 51 yards. He had a 44-yarder, which is his previous long in the win over Georgia Tech a week ago. So a couple of big chunk plays from Milton. Now McIntosh in there on second down and six. McIntosh takes tacklers with him. First and goal, Georgia. They still go. Somewhere inside the five, they're going to spot this thing. So you bobble the ball. You can take it out of the game. When you come back, you start running like you're possessed. Milton does it. Now McIntosh is doing it. First and goal at the two. McIntosh. Yep. Touchdown. Standing up. So the defense gets the fourth and in inches stop. And then they come right back with a drive. 94 yards later. 
kind of power that football right down the field. One pass, eight play drive, one short quick screen to the outside on third down. Everybody getting in the act in the end zone for Georgia. And finally they do it on the ground. Extra point is good. So a fourth down stop and a third down quick screen story. It turned into a drive and seven points. And number one in the country for a reason. Top dogs on top. 42-17. Oh, we still got three and a half minutes to go in this third quarter, but Kenny McIntosh just iced off a 95-yard drive with a two-yard touchdown run. Oh. And I don't know where that kick was going, but in the wrong direction, and uh, good starting field position for LSU. Free kick out of bounds, number 96 on the kicking team. Ball be placed at the 35-yard line. First down. Let's go out to Jenny. Yeah, well, no surprise here. Jaden Daniels is ruled out for the game. He's become a cheerleader on this LSU sideline. So it's Garrett Nussmeyer's show the rest of the way. But, guys, I'm also told that the freshman, Walker Howard, he might get an opportunity in this game. He can still redshirt if he gets into this one since he's only played one other game this season. Freshman on a lot here at Louisiana is Walker Howard. But Garrett Nussmeyer at the controls right now. He's looked pretty good. Came into it. Couldn't get it. Much tougher of a situation. Looks left the whole way and got it out there to Booty, and he's got seven. Before he's out. You see why Garrett Nussmeyer was a highly coveted recruit, can't you? Yeah. I mean, he, he's a pocket passer, quick release, very, very confident. There's his numbers on the day. Josh Williams, nice run, the biggest one of the day for LSU. Foot race. Georgia will track him down, but not before he got to the 12-yard line. He gets up hobbling a little bit. Yeah, you're right. That's the first time it really popped. And by the way, no Jalen Carter on the field on this play. He's resting. A lot more things work when 88's not out there. 47 yard run for Williams. And back in the red zone. Remember, they got down here a few minutes ago. Georgia stopped them at around the four. There is Jalen Carter getting a breather. John Emery in there right now. That tailback. But it's Nussmeyer on the fade to the corner. Incomplete Keely Ringo. Yep. Penalty flags down. Going to get called. Keely Ringo lost the ball. And when Jenkins went up for the catch, he panicked. Well, maybe rightly so. He didn't know where the ball was, so he just grabbed Jenkins. Pass interference on the defense. Number five. Foul occurred in the end zone. The ball will be placed at the two-yard line. First down. See? Can't find the ball out of position. Runs towards the receiver. He knew he was in trouble and he just grabbed a latch down. A no brainer there. And he comes out. The big guys come in. The yard line is the two. And Noah Kane in in the backfield with Nussmeyer. First and goal. Snap was late. Kane driving forward. Didn't get there. Something didn't look right on that. Point. I thought it was a legal procedure myself. I thought they were moving before the snap, didn't you? Something looked odd. Maybe. Uh, yeah, I thought the left side was moving on that play. Well, now they're a yard closer. Second and goal. Kane. Touchdown. Come on, LSU fans, you got to be proud of your football team here. Not that's quitting, that's for sure. Yeah, Brian Kelly promised a fight. He said, we'll give whatever we got in this football game. He didn't promise a win. He promised a fight. Looks like he's going to want to go for two. That 
would make it a 17 point game. Makes sense. So 65 yard drive and just four plays. They're one for three on the two point conversion attempts. It was a big one. The one that they got, that was the one that won it over Alabama. So here they are trying for the fourth time. Late receiver to the group. Yeah, and I, I think LSU now will have to take a timeout because the back judge will come up. I mean, excuse me, the official will come up and stop and allow Georgia to substitute, and the 42nd play clock would have run out. So LSU takes their first time out. Brian Kelly in his first year in the Bayou making the championship game. Here's the other guys that did it in their first year. Gus Miles, Gus Malzahn, Jim McElwain. Yeah. Interesting also, I know, you know, Brian Kelly will not win coach of the year of the SEC, but, you know, what a year he had. In most years, you might make an argument, but the guys ahead of him, Shane Beamer, name's got to come up. Yep. Kirby's name's got to come up, right, coach of the year. Josh Heupel. And, and, of course, Josh Heupel, who probably will win it. Good year of coaching here in the SEC. Let's see what they've got for the two-point conversion. Josh Williams, the tailback. Stack receivers to the right side of the bottom of your screen. And Mason Taylor is always a good call. Down this close. He just went in motion and set up on a stack on the other side. That's my throws high and incomplete. Not able to get it to Brian Thomas. And so it's going to remain 42 23 with a minute 46 remaining third quarter. Tigers hanging around. Tomorrow, with the playoff picture still developing, it's a late afternoon showdown featuring two of the league's best. A rematch of last year's AFC Championship game. When Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs take their show into the jungle to face Joe Burrow and the Bengals. All hail Sunday. Chiefs, Bengals, tomorrow. The NFL is on CBS. Now. Tomorrow, huge NFL doubleheader here at CBS featuring the Jets taking on the Vikings at one. Then in the late window, rematch of last year's AFC Championship game. The Chiefs head to Cincinnati to take on the Bengals tomorrow. The NFL on CBS. Ness, I'm thinking I'm, if you're teams that are watching this game, you know, Ohio State's watching this game, Alabama's watching this game, and they're going, uh, we can throw the ball pretty good. You know, we, we we would play these guys, you know, if we get a chance to play them. And uh, remember last year, actually the last game that Georgia's lost, Bryce Young went 26 for 44 for 421 yeah. in this championship game. So watching LSU throw the ball around, you know, Ohio State's going, oh, just put us, get us in there. We'll take our <laughs> chance. Well, we'll see who gets in there. Yeah, interesting decisions. you got to figure Ohio State's in. I mean, they were five, two teams above them lose. Now, what happens with TCU and Alabama, right? Isn't that the, the big question here? Yep. And Georgia will come out to the 25. Michigan plays Purdue tonight. Yep. And here's the teams we're talking about. And, and TCU's courageous game today. I mean, you watch that game, and it's hard not to believe they're a championship football team. I mean, you know, there's this little thing about who's the best team. I know Tennessee is thinking, well, we beat Alabama. We right. should be in this conversation. But can you come from number seven and pass up five and six? So it seems like the committee has kind of boxed themselves in here, doesn't it? Never been a two-loss team yep. in the playoff. And that one continues to hold. Oh, what a stiff one by McIntosh, but Baskerville just shakes it off. Still straightening his helmet out, though. Nice collision. I always, I always felt that that should be considered going forward as a potential penalty in college rules. You know, if you're going to call hand to the face mask 
on a pass rush inside for the defensive player. Why should the offensive player be able to take on an oncoming tackler? You got to watch your straight arm and not hit him up high like that in my mind. Something I think college football should look at. Second and seven. Bennett. Whoa, what a strike to Bowers. He was completely blanketed, and that's Brock Bowers. He's a freak athlete. He's six foot four, 230 pounds. He's lined up a guy next to a guy in Washington who's 6'7", 6'8", 270. So he looks small. He's not. <laughs> He's a normal size tight end. And then it goes. Oh, oh no. dropping the mic. Oh then, boy, here we go. Hey, you want to play quarterback? You got to be a little bit cocky, right? Yeah. Yeah, we know that being around you all these years. So. <laughs> First down at 49 after a pickup of 24. Many reasons to be humble, but you have to really try not to. <laughs> and Edwards brought down by his collar, but it was the front collar, so no flag on Roy, who made the tackle. Georgia fans were thinking it was face mask. I don't think it was. Nope. It's the front of his jersey and shoulder pads. Right there. He would have grabbed anything he could find right there. Anything, anything to get my hands on him. Right. Burns is the guy down. Major Burns, the safety. He struggled with injury. It must be cramps, as you can see. They're giving him some liquid. you got to figure it's cramps in his leg. Yep, every time they hold that foot up like that, he's cramping and trying to release it, giving him some liquids, trying to get it to... Slow down a little bit. Ease up. So he's going to come out at least for a play as we're nearing the end of the third quarter here. Yeah, probably unlikely that Georgia will snap it. They'll wait till the fourth quarter. Kirby Smart in his seventh year. Five of those seasons have produced 10 or more wins. Last year, of course, 14. And a national title for the first time in 41 years. That's Mike Bobo talking yeah. to Kirby Smart right there. Yeah. Mike, former offensive coordinator, yep. former quarterback here. Well, the only thing Georgia did not accomplish last year is win an SEC title game. They're 15 minutes away right now. The 42-23 lead. Try to remain perfect to go to 13-0 and, and head to the playoff. LSU trying to pull off some sort of upset in this next 15-minute stanza. And Georgia's got a second down and two at the LSU 41 to open the quarter. Dejan Edwards, nice little juke move to the outside. Edwards out of the way, all the way down to 15. This formation has been so good to Georgia today. They bring their two tight ends, they shift them, then they bring their wide receiver, Rosamie Jack Saint, in. They overload the right side of the line. They either toss it wide or they run the inside zone, and this time Edwards takes the inside zone and bounces it out. That's a lot of beef to that side of the field over there. 28-yard romp for Dejan Edwards to the 13-yard line. That's the value of Darnell Washington, number zero. And that puts Georgia over 200 yards on the ground tonight. Like having three tackles, six offensive linemen in the game when he's in there. Dejan, little stutter step. Almost popped it out the backside. Baskerville brought him down. The last time they attacked, this time they bring Washington across. He's put zone play, run it inside, and you're right. Just picked his way through there. Uh -oh. Give it to him again, not this time. Perkins and Roy and company are there. Yeah, nice fight up front by LSU that time. They're not looking at the clock. They're not looking at the scoreboard. They're looking at their brothers right next to them and go, let's finish it. Let's get a stop. Let's play LSU football. Danny McIntosh comes back. Well, they're pretty the hard, though, aren't they? Yeah. They just do not have the rotation up front. You've got to give those guys credit. 99, 90, 95, 92. They don't have an eight-man rotation like Georgia does. They've yeah. got about a five-man rotation. There's those two tight ends again shifting from left to right. That's the power oh, side. It's Kenny McIntosh behind the blockers. Touchdown, Georgia. Eight 
eight-yard scoring run for McIntyre. Watch Darnell Washington, the big tight end on this play, how he finishes this into the end zone. There he is. They're going to get it out. Remember last time he came across to the left. This time he's leading it. Find somebody. Oh, I found somebody. <laughs> Got a six foot zone. Nothing. Remember, you can't go low. You go high. It could hurt your knee, and you just get run over. Another physical play by Georgia's offense. And Georgia's going to go for two here. Now the chance of UGA sound out and Stetson Bennett's trying to quiet the crowd. They hit 50. End around and a pass. And a two-point conversion to the guy that got the block. Give the man a little sugar. It was a Don Mitchell number five injured all year. They figured when he was on the sideline, he's been working on his throwing, right? <laughs> Couldn't get a lot of practice, playing a lot of catch. Coming around on the reverse, it's a pass all the way. Nadane lays it out to the big fella. <laughs> so Donnell's got a touchdown catch and a two-point conversion. My friend Jeff Quartz would say that's an octopus when you get eight points. Injured, not playing in the second half. Garrett Nussmeyer's looked pretty good in relief, but that guy... Number 13 has been special again. This is the second highest scoring game for Georgia this year. They put 55 up against Vandy, but uh, right. they saved kind of the best for last. I got to say this. I don't know if we're going to be around, but I really would like to do the next LSU Georgia game when somebody puts a two point play to go to 50. <laughs> Brian Kelly's going to be running the tape of that in the locker room and the weight room from now on until they play each other again. Yep. I guarantee you that. <laughs> There's no doubt about that. What? It's what it is. 50 23. But Lesney's kickoff will sail out of the back of the end zone. Well, we talked about this guy about three and a half hours ago. What a disruptor he can be in the middle, Jalen Carter. Yeah, that's easy scout report to say this guy is a difference maker, isn't he? He's athletic, he's quick. And one of the cool things when we asked Kirby who he reminds you of that you had at Alabama, remember Kirby had that long run in championships and he goes, thanks, he thinks, and he goes, we didn't have one like this. <laughs> and they Think had a lot about of good that. Ones. Think about that. <laughs> Those statistics don't do justice to the havoc that he's created on that front for Georgia today. Mason Taylor, the tight end, settles in on the right side. Nussmeyer going that way out to Taylor, and he's got the first down. Nussmeyer throws a beautiful ball, doesn't he? Yeah. Through that ball quick. No wasted motion at all. Gets back, sets, boom. You know, I mean, it's, can't do it any better. His dad was a quarterback coach. He taught him well. Yeah, he did. Smile Munden ran him out of bounds, but not before he got the first down. There's... Nussmeyer now six out of nine in early for Jaden Daniels. Actually, the total yardage doesn't look bad for LSU. The scoreboard does that. Nussmeyer, deep ball into some traffic, incomplete. See, when you have an arm like that, and you can throw the ball 40 yards, the ball's no more than 20 feet in the air the whole time, you can attack any part of the field. The safeties can't get there fast enough. This is what the big time, you know, quarterbacks in the NFL do. They this field just becomes wider because they can get the ball to it so fast. It never hangs. Really Ringo was in coverage there on a pass that wasn't catchable. Second down at 10. Extra rusher coming and throws complete back to Kyron Lacey. That's his first catch of the day. LSU used one of their timeouts earlier when they were trying to get the right personnel on the field without the clock, plate clock expiring. So they're down to two and they're down to 12 minutes to play with. That's my double clutches, goes down the middle, got it complete. And it's best. And he's got it all the way to Georgia 35. He's like one of these guys that, you know, when you try to guard basketball and he can make off-balance jump shots in any direction, this is what Nussmeyer does. Off-balance, puts his foot way to the left side, opens up completely, and then throws to the right. 23-yard pickup to the Dogs, 35. 
Empty backfield. Gus Meyer getting ready to throw it again. If Georgia gives him the time, and he got it out of there quickly again to Josh Williams. Play. Short game. And Smile Munden made the tackle. Don't forget, coming up, before we're done, we'll have the play of the game presented by Jersey Mike Subs. Georgia changing up their defense here. Yep. Substitution by LSU, and they bring in four new pass rushers. They'll keep it on the ground against that second line of defensive line and get it inside the 30. Noah Kane, who scored a touchdown earlier in this half. We just talked about this LSU offense and where they came this year. They did it with three true freshmen, two offensive tackles in this league, tight end, Mason Taylor. Nice building block. Yeah, no doubt. That's my far side. Intercepted at the goal line by Chris Smith. And now he's got a fumble return for a score and an interception in the end zone. Yeah. Chris Smith started out on the far right side of the field and never went to the middle. When he doesn't go to the middle, it's hard to fit the ball up to the top. He stays, he stays, he doesn't have that far of a run, and he puts a bead on this one. He's the leader of the back end of the Georgia defense, and he's been special again in this SEC title game. Three Georgia won in 2005. LSU dominated Georgia in 2011, and the undefeated Tigers with Joe Burrow and company beat number four Georgia in 2019. Now it looks like it's Georgia's turn again to take this SEC title game with the college football playoff rankings looking like this. Georgia about to go to 13 and 0. Michigan playing Purdue tonight. TCU has lost, as has USC. And that means there's some teams over that right hand side that are lurking. Absolutely. I mean, uh, TCU and USC could have left no doubt. Nothing left for the committee to decide if they both win, but now it becomes committees. And uh, we talked about Alabama. We see a late flag come in there. We talked about Alabama. What had to happen? Remember, they were left for dead after that loss. We did this. We put this up for you last week, remember? Yeah, and they just said, could all this happen? Would Clemson lose? That happened. Alabama had to win the Iron Bowl convincingly. Yeah, I think enough. LSU needed to lose one of the last two games. That happened, or they would have got the spot with a win. Could USC and TCU both lose? Oh my goodness. You've got to add your own check mark. There you go. The last one came through. On the offense. Fifth penalty is half the distance to the goal. It will be second down. And that's why they're in the conversation. And I think now it decides what will be the tiebreaker for the committee. Will they go resume or will they go that little word that has always popped up? in this decision making okay it happened in 2007 2014 the little word best <laughs> that's what it's stuck that word in there okay <laughs> the best four teams so how do you decide it who's the best four teams is it what you think talent who's going to win the schedule does a two loss alabama go over a courageous tcu team that had to play one team twice a lot of decisions are being made, and it's really going to be whether the committee goes with best or resume. Here's Kendall Milton cutting it to the outside. That penalty was on Mims, by the way, the personal foul against Georgia, which backed so, it half the distance of the goal. And again, for me, if I had to weigh in, I think Ohio State is in. They were fifth. And then I got to decide, is the rules best or is it resume? Because it's two different teams if it's different angles. If it's a resume, I think TCU with the courageous season they had is going to get in. If it's best, they may just look at Alabama and say they're one of the best four teams. We shall find out. Second down, the toss is to Edwards. Trying to get to the edge, popped out of bounds. 
Uh, let's go down to Jenny for an update on our Dr. Pepper throw at halftime. Well, you all saw the unprecedented double tie of the Dr. Pepper halftime tuition giveaway. We've just been told by Dr. Pepper that they are going to award both finalists $100,000. So both Kayla Gibson and Reagan Whitaker are taking home 100 k Congratulations, ladies, and great job by Dr. Pepper there. Wow. <laughs> I mean, the that, contra controversy for the playoffs was nothing compared nothing to, the, to Dr. Pepper. No, not even in the not same category. Not even close. <laughs> Congratulations to both of you ladies. Doors in the punt. We need graphics for that. <laughs> and they're caught inside the 20 yard line by Clayton. With nine minutes to go. Happy Georgia fans right now. Nine minutes away from an SEC title. 9.07 to go. Georgia 50 to 23. Georgia in that 50 point category now. Most points in SEC championship history. A couple of Auburns, a couple of Alabamas, and now the Dogs in that mix as well. Nussmeyer and the LSU offense for the 17. And overshot, Mason Taylor is intended receiver. Here at Nussmeyer in relief of Jaden Daniels. Yeah, I mean, I mean, he's in there swinging for the fences every throw right now, <laughs> taking the easy ones. No. It's like... Bute in motion. Georgia coming with a late blitz. That's my. Oh, and he got it. Beautiful. Taylor Ringo, I thought, was just going to stop and intercept the ball, and Jeray Jenkins pulls it in. Yeah, Jeray Jenkins, that's what happens when you depend on your receivers. You throw the ball up there, and you say, when I throw it up, you're looking at the ball. You're better than that DB. He's got his back to the ball. Make the play. I give you a chance. Go make the play. 30-yard pickup, and now a strike down the middle. And that's complete to Lacey again. Nussmeyer might end up with 300 yards passing. Well, no doubt the guy has got talent. I mean, this guy can throw. Jaden Daniels throw to his arm. His whole package is different than Nussmeyer. If you got this guy in, you're, you know, you're, you're selling out to being a passing team with this guy. 50 yards in the last two plays, a 30 and then a 20-yard pickup. The Tigers have it at the Georgia 33. Plenty of time for Nussmeyer here. It goes high again intended for Taylor. With eight minutes remaining. And you know Kirby Smart on that sideline is saying, I do not want this to get to 30 points or 31. A guy that's got a couple of shutouts this year and has given up 11.3 points a game, his defense, that is, which is tops in the country. And LSU's got 23 up there. So they're twice as much as they're used to giving up per game. Nussmeyer, long ball to the end zone, broken up by Ringo. It was intended for Brian Thomas, and he's still down. So when you're in proper phase, it's a lot easier to track that ball. Remember the last time in the end zone when he had the pass interference, he was not in phase. This time he's there, it's easier to track it instead of just trying to grab the receiver. Go out at practice all the time and watch these great athletes in the SEC play bump and run coverage and get trained by the defensive backfield coach. They talk the word phase, stay in phase over and over again. And I don't like the way he landed on that left arm and shoulder, and that's what they are looking at with Brian Thomas. Weigh the ramifications of this one and bring you the best highlights from Championship Saturday. That's all coming up. About eight minutes from now, eight minutes of game time, Brian Thomas went straight to the LSU medical tent, favoring his left arm, shoulder, wrists. They were actually holding on to his arm to help him into the tent. Jalen Carter has not really been involved on this drive defensively for Georgia.
That's my has to backpedal to throw and still completed it. And he's going to be a yard short of the first down, I think, maybe two. And that's Malik Neighbors. I thought it bounced. Did it bounce or not? Yeah, it bounced. They're going to re over, overturn that play. Replay official will grab that one. And Mitchell Wilkins is our replay official. Or not. There we they, go. They will. Ness, you know, you the said the one thing Kirby didn't you. want really is another to touchdown place team it. to get to 30. You know, the other thing he doesn't want? Jalen Carter to get hurt. He hasn't had him on the field this whole drive. They've substituted twice, and number 88 has been on the sideline. The one guy Georgia does not want to get injured late in this game, number 88. I think that's smart. Yep. I mean, they don't play again for about 28 days. And also, when you think about Warren McClendon, Lad McConkey, some of the other guys that headed out and Jenny told us would not return. Those guys at least have time. We don't know the severity of the injuries, but they at least have time to try to heal before their playoff game against whomever on uh, December 31st right here in this building. Yep, you see the Georgia players. No, 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 no. That, that <laughs> bounced. There's McConkey with his pads off. Had a big game though. This one shouldn't take a long time, but seems to me it would seems shouldn't. like it already has. <laughs> After further review, the pass was incomplete. The ball hit the ground. Uh, prior to the receiver making possession. So they'll back it up to the 38 yard line. And it's fourth down. So LSU needs this one to keep the ball. to get to the 23 for a first down. Georgia four-man rush on Nussmeyer. They had him. He got away. And now he's going deep to the end zone and got it. Touchdown, LSU. Jeray Jenkins. You know, I got to say, gold number nine. If Joe Burrow's watching this game, he's going to go, that's a good move right there. <laughs> I mean, to run away from that blitz because they had him in the backfield. Beal had him dead coming around the corner. Spin out a la Joe Burrow. Look deep. And finally, open receiver. It almost looks like Joe's Heisman moment the game we did, right? Absolutely. When he went to Jefferson for the touchdown. How about that? Play? Similar. <laughs> so to say that, uh, Joe, yeah, that's a good play. <laughs> well, here comes the 30th point for LSU. And no one cool Joe Burrow. Not a lot impresses that guy. No. Right? <laughs> what a relief duty game yes. for Nussmeyer. Somehow kept his balance. Then he's going to go back across his body to the middle of the end zone and finds Duray Jenkins diving for the catch. Nussmeyer, 253 yards and two touchdowns on 12 completions. And that one caps an 83 yard drive in a little under two minutes. And it's 50 to 30. Yeah. Both guys threw for what? They're close to 450 yards they got passing here. Let me look down here. It's got you a 40, said, 461. 461, you said and you're losing? There's teams looking at it going, well, I want to throw against these guys. Yeah. I mean, LSU, you threw for 461 yards, and you're down by 20. That's right. Will they go onside kick here? Nope. 
took away. Georgia was thinking that yep. same thing. They didn't have anybody back at the goal line. Kyrus Jackson was the closest guy around the 15 yard line. So 7 12 remaining and Georgia actually. Uh, yes, who you got for the Heisman? It's gotten a little murky here, hasn't it? Well, I was pretty impressed with Caleb Williams before he got yeah. hurt last night. And, and he I, recognizes the outstanding college football player whose performance best exhibits the pursuit of excellence with integrity. Hmm. Epitomizes great ability combined with diligence, perseverance, and hard work. Sounds like they're talking about that guy right there. Right? <laughs> Gaudy stats never hurt. No, no. We, um, how about back to back championships? Well, I know. I'm not arguing with you. Yeah, I mean, okay. He's got to be in the crowd. You got to think about it. When you vote, you got to go, all right, let me think about this. Okay. I mean, there's been other. I don't know how far Stetson Bennett's going to go. I'm not giving him any limit, by the way. But there's been non-NFL quarterbacks that have won this before, right? I right. mean, winners. Well, if Georgia keeps rolling, if Georgia repeats as national champion, you can count on one hand the guys that have won two national titles at the quarterback positions. Steve Jones at Oklahoma. Yep. Uh, Steve Davis at Oklahoma. Thank you, Jerry Taggy. Uh, Tommy Frazier at Nebraska. Matt Leiner. A.J. McCarron. Tim Tebow won two, but they weren't back to back. back. To back. Yep. So I mean, that's pretty pretty good company. I say, Jeez. any national championship. <laughs> good company. That's true. Branson Robinson. But he, but even Kirby talks about that. We did not want him to play. We we found every way we could to keep that guy off the field, and he just kept battling. We had to let him play. Started all off as a walk on went to junior college in Mississippi was on the scout team pretended to be Baker Mayfield when Georgia was playing Absolutely. Oklahoma in the playoff where his teammates first bought in with Stetson Bennett right yep. fought, him, fought him in practice. What a career never be forgotten at Georgia I'll tell you that that's for sure. Don't forget this game either. It's a wide open though. I mean, this vote for Heisman is wide open either. Robinson going to be close to the first down. Baskerville's been in a lot of tackles today. Number 23 was on the 19 team, LSU team, and he's playing in his last one here. Nussmeyer goes, if you promise not to put 88 out there, I'll promise you some yards in the throne again. <laughs> Brett Thorson to punt. End over end kick. It's going to take a big time Georgia bounce. Still rolling down inside the 15 yard, inside the 10 yard line. And so let's use 90 yards away again. But we haven't seen the last pass for Garrett Nussmeyer for sure. And right now, Kirby Smiley puts in a lot of substitutes. He's got all backups on the field right now, even in the secondary. Doesn't want a freak injury at the end of the football game to his first line guys. Eighty points between these two teams, and still 4:43 to go. If Jalen Carter ran out there, we'll see if Kirby can still tackle well because he's going to tackle this. <laughs> Low snap. That's my a little bit of trouble. Throws and completes another one out to Mason Taylor, all the way to the 38-yard line. This guy's got a bright future, doesn't he? He's going to get bigger, stronger, Mason Taylor. He's already showed a lot already, but as he gets into the program, he'll become next year to year after one of those tight end freaks that we'll be watching. 27 yard pickup. Nussmeyer comes up, tossing again. To that is a nice collision. And that's David Daniel Sisabaugh. These are the guys that can't get on the field that have been recruited, and that could be targeting, couldn't it? Yeah, you could see it. Number 45 was saying targeting. It'll be called and probably it'll be upheld. Personal foul, targeting number 14 on the defense. 
The previous play is under further review. We'll get our second look. I'm not 100% sure. Gene, what do you think? You know, it's it's close to the six-inch crown from the top. To me, though, he's lowering the indicators, lowering, and then attacking with that crown. To me, I believe that's a targeting foul, guys. I'm with you. That next, that look right there, I thought Ness showed it. From behind, it was tough to see, but I thought he... <laughs> that's, they don't want that. He... It is in real time. <laughs> It was a high-speed collision, that's for sure. Close. And remember, that's another reason why Kirby did not want any of his starters out there. Even if they didn't get hurt, a targeting penalty now would mean they missed the first half of the playoff game, right. even though it's, as Ness told you, what, 28, 29 days away. After further review, there is no targeting by number 14 on the play. He may remain in the game. It is second down. Slight like pick becoming in like pass interference now. Every time you watch it, you think you know the rule. <laughs> so he'll remain in the game. Josh Williams will come out and shake it off a Looks little like bit. A little bit. <laughs> yeah, that, Brian Kelly had to get an explanation of that. He goes, I'm standing right here. I saw his helmet collide. And then the explanation had to be it wasn't the crown. So second down at seven. A flat running, approaching four minutes. Extra rusher coming. Ness Myers to throw off his back foot and get it over near the sideline and complete. Third down at seven. Still coaching over there. The 355 to go. Look at the combined numbers between Daniels and Nussmeier. <laughs> yeah. 500 in the air, but almost. Yeah. Nussmeier, this one's oh, complete. Man, what a throw. To the 50 and maybe into Georgia territory, on, Mason Taylor. On time. If he waits even a half second here, he'll lead him right into coverage. Let's it go now before he can get to the outside and to the next defender to the outside of the field. Beautiful play. Empty backfield, so there's another Nussmeyer pass upcoming. They're over 500 now in the air between the two quarterbacks and looking for more. So we're going to head over to the security highway patrol. <laughs> get an update from Jenny. Yeah, LSU wide receiver Brian Thomas. He was slow to get up, grabbing at that left arm. He went inside the injury tent. The pads came off inside. Came back out, though, helmet on on the sidelines. I'm told it's a shoulder injury, a questionable return, guys. Yeah, he had a bad landing in the end zone, on attempting to catch that pass in front of Keely Ringo. And his shoulder got jammed on his landing. Williams flushes out of the backfield. Four-man Georgia rush coming. Look out, Dave Nussmeyer. Tried to get it to Williams over his head and complete. Quarterback pressure coming from Smile London. So you got to have somebody out there if you're Georgia to call the signals. And Smile London is the guy that's doing it. Starting inside linebacker number two is still out there calling all the spots of what to do, what the coverage is, strength of the formation, and taking the signals from the sideline as well. There you see him right in the middle of your picture. Third down and ten. Georgia crowd still making some pretty good noise in here. That's my going to go down. The ball is out and Georgia's got it.
Yes, I think it was Robert Beal, number 33, that came around the corner that time. You remember, he's the guy that missed on the play with the touchdown pass. This time, flushes him and goes for the ball and swats it out before he gets a beautiful play. Then big Warren Brinson covered it. Here comes the strip that Beal had on the right hand, the passing hand. And then the big fella swallows it. Nussmeyer, who's been brilliant since coming in, and that one didn't go so well. Georgia pressure finally got to him. So Georgia, 320 remaining, and they're at the 38-yard line of LSU. Again, the power is to Georgia's right if they're going to run it that way with Robinson. He's going to go straight up the middle. And picks up eight yards. Ness, when do you think that Stetson Bennett is going to get a curtain call here? I think they're going to bring in Carson back yep. and have Stetson say to the crowd, I'll be back in 28 days. <laughs> right here, right, same place. <laughs> My career high was against Oregon in week one. I got four touchdown passes in week whatever this is, 14, and I'll be back. as much clock as possible. We're going to down here two and a half to go. Robinson's got the first down. Well, you start thinking about calling it Dog Dynasty. Good Stooley days. Buck Blue and Herschel Walker and those guys, 43 4 and 1. And right now, 2019 to the present, 46 and 5, the winningest senior class ever for Georgia. I think Alabama's senior class this year is 146 or 7. Those are the top two. Yep. And this will be the icing on an undefeated cake. That's and Bennett takes a knee. And the oldest quarterback to win an SEC championship is number 13. He goes, I'm just coming into my own. I'm 25. Yep. <laughs> I hit my prime. Just learning how to play this. Game. That's right. Doing a pretty good job of it. Had to go to Mississippi, play some junior college That's ball. Right. Brian Kelly not going to stop the clock here. Bennett looks at that play clock until the very last moment and takes one more knee. And McConkey goes, let's give him a little noise. I think the message that Kirby's given to Stetson Bennett and the Georgia fans in Georgia's We'll wait for our curtain calls for the championship. I guess so. Right? Probably one more wink coming from Stetson Bennett, though, as he looks to the sideline. That'll do it. Your SEC champions for 2022, the Georgia Bulldogs. And still perfect at 13-0. So the playoff awaits in a little over three weeks. Stetson Bennett's probably going to be the MVP of this game as he was in both the playoff and the national championship a year ago. And he got a lot of help from his friends. Four different receivers caught touchdowns. Chris Smith had an interception and a 96-yard fumble return 